warning, the following video is extremely disturbing. You've been warned. It was, I shared it and I tagged my bestie in it because we were both friends with this girl. He was basically a user. And I think the post was something about, oh, those people are more than happy to tell everyone about all the stuff they did for you, but won't ever mention all the stuff you did for them. And so I tagged my friend, my bestie Abby in it. And I was like, ain't yeah. this the truth? Tagged her in it. And then Kirsten decided to comment on it and said, yeah, that's right. And I was like, sorry, what I now? saw that. I Who saw the that. Who do you think you are? And yes, I lost my temper. But as you've all seen, I can lose my temper. It just happened. Usually, like I say, my pain level's very high at the moment. I have more control over it. But if I'm in a lot of pain, I don't have much control over it. And her comment really pissed me off. So I commented back on it and she decided to rip into me, then started sending me messages via WhatsApp ripping into me, then sent me text messages ripping into me, and then made a threat to her own life. And so I contacted John, because obviously I didn't know everything I know about John now. I contacted John, forwarded the last message she'd sent to me and said, right, your daughter has just sent me this. This is not on me to deal with. This is on you to deal with. And I forwarded the message on to him because it wasn't for me to deal with. It was on him to deal with because that's not my kid. Now, if I found out that Agreed. my kid had done something, yeah. had made a threat to their own life, I would want to know. And I wouldn't care who told me that fact. I just want to know so I could go and save my child. So I told him. Now, I don't know what came of that because he didn't give me any more information. All he did was message me and said, she's safe. Didn't give me any more information than that. I didn't need any more information than that. I just needed to know she was safe. So even after all of that, after all of that time, because it had been ages since we'd spoken and then tons of abuse, I still put her needs first just in case. So I can completely understand that that need and obviously now i'm like heather if i saw something that i thought mm, i'd ring the police myself i'd ring an ambulance myself because i've got a full address which i'm never going to share but i've got a full address yeah. and i would happily ring the ambulance and have it sent to her house for two reasons one there's going to be a there's going to come a time where she has injected too many meds or she's made her blood sugar levels so messed up that johnny boy isn't going to get there on time and she's going to need an ambulance and two every time an ambulance goes out there's a record of an ambulance going out and while yes it's a waste it's yeah, a waste just off the back of, of that yes it's dropping it is possible to call for help for someone if you don't have their address i've done it many times for people who have had thoughts of harming themselves yeah. and they've been clear about it online you can call yeah, your local police and they they can they can work out who they are mm -hmm. and they can get help to them it does yeah. take longer but don't feel that if you see something online and you don't have that person's a lot of their details don't think that you can't help to be fair i think if you called an ambulance for Kay at this point they because probably know exactly what you're yeah. talking about straight away to be fair, you probably just need to give a full name and they'll go, yep, yeah, we know where she lives. I don't even think you need to give the full name from everything I've heard today. From what that. I've, the messages I've had today, I don't day. think you even need to give a full name, to be honest. Mm -mm. Okay, but what do you mean, the Noodle? Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw, I did a post um, yesterday. Was it? Not lastly. Basically, Wait, what, um... <laughs> The irony was of the post, it was basically saying to victims, if you are a mod and you want to get out, there is support for you because there are mods who are scared to leave. There are mods who have been vilely abused. There are mods who are too scared to leave because of the repercussions, but of their mental health is suffering horrifically because they're too scared to leave and they think that if they leave they'll have no friends they'll, they'll i mean a they know what will happen to them b they think they're going to have no friends they're going to be completely isolated thank you for the cat um and i wanted people to know that for one i'm their friend they can tell me if they want to tell somebody what's going on, I will support them and I will help them get out. 
that that I'm basically I know what I mean I don't know if you know Sally you know Sally don't you Emily um yes yes so basically I was going to be saying that I there is somebody who is working but there are there are things going on behind the scenes and that basically I can tell you past you can I can point you in the direction of someone who to tell your story to uh, etc etc but basically I can't remember all of it because um, <laughs> I've got brain fog but basically I have had so many I've, I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages today from people um, very similar to what Chloe was saying um, very similar to the things that Chloe was saying about the abuse about the fact that they've given money um, there's person saying how you know they have to stay up all night they're they get a lot of abuse if they don't stay up all night um i've had people say um ironically i had somebody come on my uh, leave a comment on my post saying that um gosh let me remember it. sorry they were saying that completely forgot what they said, what they said. but um they people were saying that that to us you me other people sally having these lives and having posts is putting mods in danger <laughs> in danger um and i said um and i'm like and that they might want to unalive themselves and i was i said how i said how is my post in any way making a mod want to unalive themselves because all i'm saying is if you want to leave I'm here to support you and I can point you in the right direction of support and help and that there is a whole community that will be here to catch you, to hold you, to help you. Um, that wouldn't make someone want to un unalive themselves. No. And if being a mod is such a happy thing, if you're a happy mod, then you've got nothing, you've got no reason to want to unalive yourself. So. In what way is my post in any way bothering any mod? She didn't have an And answer. if you're feeling that vulnerable, please leave the app and seek some help. If you need some numbers, exactly. I'm happy to give you numbers. Um, exactly. Nobody's hating on her. We're raising awareness. That's As Mother Noodle said. said, we're all here for you. I didn't say, I said this isn't about Kirsten. This is about mods. This is about people who are vulnerable, who are giving money, who have given money. And then when they have needed it back, um, and have asked for it back, have been blocked. Um, when they've gone to her father to say, to say look, I, I can't get hold of her, I need my money back. The father has said he was stupid for giving it to her in the first place and then blocked them. Yep. I've had mods who did leave and did not get abuse, but were so scared that they have changed their names that they've deleted their accounts and set up completely new accounts with new names so that they can't be found. And they didn't get abuse, but obviously they knew what they could get and they didn't, they just wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. I've had, I've had some heartbreaking stories today and messages and I'm going to pass them all on to Sally. Yeah. And that's what I've, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's been. I just wanted people to know, and but in the middle of all that, um, I had somebody who was clearly a mole who came on, and I gave them my number, only to discover this evening that they have been happily chatting away with Kay on her live as if they're the happiest person on the planet not someone who's about to unalive themselves because they're so traumatized by the position they're in so yeah. they've got my number now and i do i give a shit like you emily i have a temper i'm not called a rottweiler for nothing i don't give a shit try me i think i actually said that in my post try me so yeah that's, that's that, exactly yeah. what i'm like when it comes yeah, to that's why i did I, i'm pretty sure up. i said bring it on yeah, in I my can't video abide. I can't abide bullies and no, no, hate them. bullies pick on people who are weaker than them and I, it's interesting that I've had a lot to say on all of these un, uncovering posts, all of these um, 
accounts which are showing evidence and stuff. I've had been very vocal on a lot of them, and I always share every reshare every single one of them. No one said a word to me. Yeah, because. A, also, they know what Mia's like. Mia, somebody, I mean, I'm a, a completely shit with any technology. I am the biggest technophobe. I can get on this live now and I will not know how to get off it. Um, I had a go at going live myself one, one Monday afternoon and I was trapped in the world of liveness and I <laughs> Me too. Don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> I was saying to people, can you leave? Because I don't I can't I don't know how to close this down. And I could have still I could have been stuck in that life for three weeks. I could still have, I could have been there. It could have gone to the toilet with me, it could have gone to the shower, it could have gone everywhere. Because I couldn't know how to get out of it. But I'm the two girl who decided to come on and troll I me. And then I couldn't. I want to say, out. Mother Noodle, going off what you've been saying about yeah. the mods. Yeah. So, I am in contact with several of her current mods. I'm not obviously. I'm not going to say who. Yeah, absolutely. And I can I can second what you're saying now. Very very scared to leave. And I've I'm been passed on course. information that I've passed to the relatively of relative authorities, whatever you call it, but. Yeah, there's a lot of mods that have contacted me. Well, Tony, so I'm still modding for her, and they're terrified of her. Yeah, they are. And um, what this, that was what this person was saying. That reminded me. Thank you. Um, the person messaged me privately and said, um, I don't know why you put that post up. The mod's perfectly free to leave at any point. They're not trapped. And the word she used was they're not hostages. But your um, post is creating a lot of hate. Um, no one's believing Kirsten. She's, and then basically the, the, the parting shot was, you know, she might she might die tonight. She might be dead by tonight. She's in hospital. She might be dead. Excuse That's me? Horrible. She's been alive this afternoon. So I replied and said, and, and told this person, okay, they're not hostages, then why are people who have been her mods and left but not had abuse guy basically gone into witness protection on TikTok? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Why is it, what I wanted to say kind of comes off the back of that, and it was that the vast majority of us all have chronic illnesses. We're all surrounded Absolutely. by people with chronic illnesses, and it's taken a long time for us to get diagnosed and we've had a lot of medical professionals and people around us not believe us so your first instinct is to believe your first instinct is to try and help and we're yeah, so used to advocating for ourselves and other people that when you see someone you think is not being treated correctly you try to help them you try to advocate for them and that's how people have got themselves in this pickle because they feel like if they, if they leave if something happens they feel like it's on them yeah and this is what I also to say, say. I, this is why that, I got people because I gave this person my number because I wanted to help them and yeah. advocate for them. And the response to that was, I'm now my phone number, most likely in the hands of Kay and anyone else in that. But if they choose to have a go, I dare you. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. Can uh, I add, said, Emily? Uh, a lot yeah, of people do not understand that the situation the mods are in or the previous mods have been in is actually classed as domestic violence because yeah. they're, they're close friends. Control. Domestic violence, yeah, exactly. It is it coercive comes in control. many forms. And this is um, the thing. Blackmailing Someone... and threatening to unalive yourself, that's also part of, it comes in that same yeah. uh, category of domestic violence. Domestic violence does not necessarily mean your partner and you are having an argument. Domestic violence can be involved in friendships, it can yeah. be involved in relationships, and it can be involved in parent and child as well. Yeah. Uh, becoming it's me, the same just, with like, hang on Lauren, two sorry. seconds. Um, becoming me, what does she get on the mods that scares them? Does she get them to confide personal stuff? That is literally the first thing she does. Now, I, I've had a DV relationship. I was with yeah. someone for eight years and they used every form of A that you can think of. And I didn't realize until the very end, until I got out, just the, he tried to unalive me. And that's what made me go, I draw the line at that and I walked Wait, away. you say DV, not the full term because it's triggering for some people? Yes. I just have a comment. Sorry, Sorry. I Sorry. didn't realize. So Sorry. basically, I was in a relationship like that for eight years. So for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't see 
the massive red flags that were with Kirsten. But the first thing she will do is seem so utterly absorbed and interested in your life and in it's how grooming. hard your life has been. And she will get love bombing. everything it's, out it's of you. And and love bombing. And it, it's it is love bombing. And she will love bomb you and make you feel like you're special, like you're heard. And we all know as people with chronic illnesses, the one thing that no one does is friggin' listen to us. No one fecking listens to us ever. So when you finally find someone who actually listens to you, who understands, who li when you say, I am in pain all the time and the doctors don't listen, backs you up and says they need to listen, they should help you, I get it. Yeah. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about the chronic illness community is we all do that for each other, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it can result in people just utterly manipulating you and taking yeah. advantage and when she's when she's got all that information she will then use that against you if you stop being her friend because it's basically like splitting up with a partner you know that yeah. they've got secrets of yours and they can share them with other people and the problem with that is a lot of like i'm old enough to not share most of my anything that i that isn't already public knowledge i don't share it's shared with very very few people that are uh, there are uh, two people on this planet that know my entire life story and one of them is my therapist and that's because i am not willing to put my entire life in someone else's basket because i don't want anyone to have that power over me no unfortunately oh, it's Kay apparently said, kay's in here i don't know if it's true but apparently she's here somewhere now, unfortunately, a lot of the, the mods that she attracts Hello. are younger and don't have, no offence to anyone, don't have the life experiences to know what to hold back and what to share. And so they'll share things and then oh, Kirsten can use all of those against you. And the problem with that is when you've got a vulnerable, say, child. Under Alex, apparently. Under Alex is the name. No, Alex is not no, Kirsten. No, that's not. Okay. Oh, Alex, no, that isn't. Alex is one of the revealers. What are they called? Um, expose people. Yeah. A people. Alex is one of the exposing <laughs> accounts. Exposer accounts. Yeah, that's not, that's not. Um, um, yeah, so what Kirsten will do is, so because she's got, she'll get a vulnerable person who is, say, 18, just turned 18. She'll find it's a vulnerable she's person. she's an exposer, Frenchie. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. That's really rude. Sorry, Emily. She'll find a an eighteen year old who's got chronic illnesses, who's literally just been um diagnosed or is waiting for a diagnosis and been fighting for a diagnosis, and she will take them and she will love bomb them. And so they share their lives with her and they'll share and the thing is, we all do say like I I slag my other half off. I love him to pieces. He is the best thing that ever happened to me apart from my son. But I slag him off and I say he's a an arsehole because that's what we do with our partners. And we do it with our parents. We do it with everyone that we care about because we all have a whinge about people we love because even though we love them, they can do our heads in. I love my son more than I like anyone else on this planet. But he's a little shit. And so yeah, I, will, I agree you know, with I that can, statement. I can talk to other parents about kids being little shits and the... The thing is, if you share that with anyone else on the planet, that's fine. They're not going to share that secret with anyone else. They probably won't even remember that you told them that secret because for them it's just a normal right, conversation. So Whereas, so me and Alex are Kirsten's besties. Yeah, besties Kirsten forever, will use it. it. <laughs> Kirsten will literally use it and weaponize it. She will take everything you have ever told her and weaponize it against you and push yeah. it back out against you and grab everyone else like she did with chloe chloe was explaining before uh, you can speak in a minute christmas chloe was explaining before probably i rudely interrupted her that um she had she was You're all right. trying to explain herself on their mods chat but it was only two people who actually believed what she was saying because that's what kirsten does kirsten will go on the offensive and go she's said lies she's done this she's done that she's been really horrible to me and who are you going to believe you're going to believe the person who you've been yes. looking after yeah. and watching over and talking to and modding for for the past i don't know six months she never had an ambulance help to her someone say she had an air ambulance no emily's proved that it's not no, true. She's um 
or are you going to believe shit. are you going to believe one single mod and of course common sense dictates you're going to believe the person who you've trusted for ages why would she lie because that's the thing because most of us don't lie about those things so why would she lie and because you wouldn't you think no one else would and then the problem is is that she will weaponize all of that against you she did it to chloe she did it to me she did it to me she did it to amy she will do she that over and over again to maxine. and maxine yeah uh, sorry can i just let christmas jump in Hi. christmas what did you want to say hi can you hear me yes yeah. hi so i just have a few points to make yes um so i used to mod for a completely different but very toxic and person who is very much like kirsten um and i had to call an ambulance and police on her several times and i just want to say you don't actually need to know the person's name address where in the uk you don't need to know anything you just need to know their tiktok name and the police will find them um and also that uh bag that she has attached to her nose hose is a catheter bag sorry yeah we know heather told us that <laughs> yeah um and the nose that's... hose isn't even a proper hose because my daughter has one and so they're just they're both fake sorry lucy lou what do you want now girl sorry but i can't be bothered with your little games babe and yeah it is katia unfortunately she's also another very toxic person on this app and she's very much like kirsten oh yes i have seen it as well emma, uh, can you uh, keep i'm an here eye. if you need it because i also modded for her emma can you keep an eye on lucy and if she starts saying crap that she shouldn't just just boot her because i'm not dealing with her crap i know i booted her already emily but she's tagging me in loads of posts I, don't I just can't lose, be bothered. So I know I don't she's want to watching lose my it. Temper tonight. I'm in too much pain. I can't be dealing yeah, with it. Yeah, but this is why I'm just like, you see, the thing is, they don't understand. I generally don't give a shit. Excuse my language, but I generally don't. Thank you, Anna. I've got bigger and better things to do. However, I will, as long as I've got breath in me, I will raise awareness of the damage that Kirsten is doing. And I will try and get her help because I'm a mother myself. Yeah. I'm second here of an 18 year old who is chronically ill. And I have got no hate for Kirsten. I just want to get her help. And getting her help involves getting her off this app. Yes. Because this app is fueling her illness. It is feeding into I mean. her belief that she is ill. And also, every time she speaks to someone who's got a chronic illness, she's gathering information about illness so she can be more accurate in what she says so that she's more believable in what she says you're not just a friend of hers you're a, a source of information you're a mind you're a, of her medical journal basically yeah Absolutely. and i can vouch what mother noodle is saying because that is what she did and this is how i called her out in 2017 she claimed to have a same condition as my child has at the point he was the only child alive who had ever had this condition there's now four other people but they're all children this, yeah, I she, mean, she was asking me questions and she was reciting it word for word saying she had it and i was like this is impossible she's been doing that with mia she um mia was saying um how bad her rumination syndrome was and she said that her, st her stomach was so bad that and which is true that um she can't even tolerate her own saliva or stomach acid or anything she throws that up 24 hours later kirsten was saying exactly the same thing on her life word for word um i can't even stomach i can't even tolerate my own stomach acid or my saliva um well yeah because at that point she was following mia um she and we we all believed her but that was when mia's like mm. <laughs> she's uh yeah, she's lifting things from people's lives. And she also doesn't like anyone to be have the same condition as her and be sicker than her. No. This oh, no one's allowed to be sicker than her. To no start one out is allowed to be sicker than her. This is why I decided to start out in her on TikTok as well yeah, as Facebook, because I've been doing it on Facebook for years. Emily knows Bye. this. Chloe knows this, Zoe knows this. I was oh. currently going through chemo. I finished it three weeks ago. And that's oh. another thing I want to say. You don't always lose your hair in chemo. It's the certain drugs oh that God. cause you to lose your hair. That's a very big misconception. Yes. But I had a, a tube, an NG tube 
that went into my stomach to drain the excess bar that my body kept producing because of the chemo. Yeah. And if I didn't, I literally looked like I was pregnant. It was horrendous. The pain was horrendous. And then she said to me, you wouldn't be given an NG tube unless you were tube fed. And I was like, mm, but That's why would I say that? <laughs> and after that, she started coming after me. Some other people started coming after my child and making comments about my child. And I was like, enough's enough. So I literally, everything I had on this girl, I posted. And I said to everybody, make your own opinions, go onto my page, look for yourselves. I can prove what I was saying. I've got no problems. If somebody wants to see it, I, I can show it. But she can never do the same thing. And then she turned around and said she had breast cancer, or she thought she had breast cancer. Whilst I was waiting for the all clear, whether or not I needed more treatment or I could wait the further six months and get another check, she then said she had breast cancer. She then said she went in and got a mammogram. At no biopsy, might I add, which if it was suspected she had a lump and it was a suspected breast cancer like she was making out, they would certainly take a biopsy, I can assure you that. Yeah. She then gave herself the all clear in the space of two hours on yeah. the same day. I'm so sorry, Heather, that you've been through cancer, that you are battling cancer, have battled cancer, and I really hope that it all goes well for you. You shouldn't have, and that you should not have had to go through that with cancer whilst you're ill. Yeah. This is the thing, it didn't, it didn't bother me because I was like, listen, love, you have no idea what it does to your body. Because she also made comments because that was the fifth time I'd had cancer. I carry several different genes and it will come back time and time again. I accepted that last year when I was told. But she made comments about because I don't have any teeth because through the chemo and the vomiting and the radiation, my teeth were crumbled. And there was a bigger risk of keeping my teeth because of septus and getting an infection. So I told them to pull them out years ago when I first had cancer because I wasn't willing to make that risk. And she came after me making comments, thinking it would bother me. But I really don't care. I, don't, I really don't care about having no teeth. Anybody that knows me will tell you that. Can I just say something about paralysis? Because I've just seen it in the comments. Um, Hang on two seconds, Zoe. I just want right. to say quickly, if anyone, um, wants to reach out because i've i've seen there's quite a few comments um from new people That's that have, new, that have just joined right. um the live that haven't obviously what? haven't seen all the videos and stuff like that up till now if anyone wants to message me after the well if anyone wants to message me at any point you can message me but i obviously won't message back until after the live because i can't go on my messenger until after the live but i'm more than happy to message anyone back Sorry, Zoe, continue. I was just going to say, there are different levels to paralysis. If you look it up, you can find the information. Kay is claiming full paralysis, but the second someone comes on her, comes on her lives or is a mod for her, like I was, that can move their leg, even the slightest bit, they are faking. Apparently, yeah. according to her, it's either you fall paralysed and you can't move your legs at all, or you're faking it. It's what she said to me was, because I could move my legs, that I wasn't paralysed. And Chloe you can that. that she said that to me. Chloe, she moves her legs regularly. I know she does. Yep. She stands up. She yep. moves. I've seen, well, I saw a live, um, a recording of a live yesterday where she stood up to do to move something. And then realized, you could see from her looking at the camera, she realised what she'd done. That she just yeah. filmed herself on live standing up it's like lifting herself up so i'm so sorry again i just can't believe that she's oh but she's attacking people you've got and telling everyone they're wrong i know the and it was like what she's what she's really failed with what she's really really after is the fact that obviously she moved to the bungalow and all the people that are currently on her live all the people that currently follow her that are allowed to go on her lives and that comment and all of her mods aren't related in any way, shape or form to the people who modded when she lived in her old place. Now I've seen a video of her that was taken of one of her lives where she was arguing the, the, the toss, arguing the toss that the videos of her standing are from her old place. <laughs> all of the videos of her standing are from her old place, apparently. Right now, I can prove 
literal evidence, hard evidence, because I have the videos, because I used to watch her when she was in her old place. So I have recordings, live recordings, because she asked me to record a couple of her lives because she had trolls on. So I recorded the lives. So I have recordings of her lives in her bedroom, well, in her then bedroom and in her living room. So I have, I know exactly what the walls look like and exactly what the ceiling looked like and exactly what light fitting she had in both rooms. So the fact that she can try and argue the toss and say, no, 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 that was from when I lived in my old place. No, it wasn't. She's talking absolute plain shit. I can prove that it's bullshit and I'm more than happy to do that. Now I've had the clearance because they're from her life, because they're from her TikTok and they were public knowledge. I'm allowed to share them. I am going to be sharing all of them because I can. And it proves that she's talking shit because the videos of her standing up are all from her new place, which all dates after when she states she was made to be paralyzed, which obviously, as we've discussed before, we've all heard a different version of events as to how that fucking happened. Yeah. Emily, I'm going to have to oh, spend on it. I'm Emily, really sorry, right. but I've had a full... Yeah. Um, I'm okay. You need to have an ambulance. Yeah, Are I'm you okay. okay? I've had a bit of a turn. Are you sure? No. No, no, no. Okay, I'm if okay. you need one, please yeah, message fine. me I'm and I'll send one out to you. Oh, that's okay then, as long as your mum's coming. Can you message me to let me know you're okay? Like, let me know when your mum gets there, please. Thank you, darling. Love you. Thank you. Take care. Okay, Amy, love you. Take care. Love you, Amy. Take love care, you, both. Amy. Bye. So somebody asked about Amy. MS. So I've, I've suffered with MS for the past 10 years. I have reoccurring, relapsing MS. So I can be fine for years, months, and then all of a sudden, sometimes I can't move my legs. Um, she tried to say, and this was back in, I want to say 2019, that yeah, 2019, fun. she said that the reason she couldn't walk was because of multiple sclerosis. When I asked her what type she had, she couldn't name it. She couldn't tell me what it was, and then all of a sudden she dropped that. Mm. Well, well, there's a video, a very, in very entertaining video someone shared. I think Sally shared it, or maybe Emily, of her saying she had FND. And she goes into great detail explaining what FND is. And then there's another video of her saying, I've, no, I've never said I've had it. I never said that. I, I've never yeah. played it. Yeah. Except the FND, the way she described it, is not FND. And it's very dangerous and degrading to those that have FND. My sister has FND. Exactly. And it's not it's how it works. Well, it's also dangerous, Mike. The other, the other, there are reasons she needs off this app. One, for her own health and for safety. Two, for other people's health and safety, because she is giving out this, she's telling people, as I've heard today, and I've heard on other lives, and I've heard on pages today, giving people horrifically misleading advice, which can, can potentially prove fatal to them. He's also giving them, telling people, how, I mean, she is sitting there as a, just a, a visual. If you are someone new to her page and you're, you're new to the world of tubes and you're just trying to find a community of people to who you can you know, relate to and get advice from, Mia was like that, that person last January. And you come across Kirsten and you're told in hospital that you have to very, very, very slowly put your medicine in. But you, every single day, watch Kirsten pushing her meds really fast. If Mia did any meds at that speed, she would be really ill. Anything going through jejunum. Well, apparently it's going into jejunum, except we see with Kirsten that it comes straight out of MG. This is the thing, <laughs> Mother Noodle, you'll you know this as well as like other people that deal with tubes. <laughs> like, that's what I shouldn't laugh because it's not funny when it really happens. But, yeah, yeah. but the thing is, the only t <clears throat> sorry, my balls just dropped. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that was inappropriate. <laughs> 
just want to say well, the only thing about, is that the real reason that would happen is if the tube flipped and if the tube yes, flipped Emma. that's a medical emergency Absolutely. i do have tourette's people so i do apologize for inappropriate comments okay, she doesn't um, she says she takes that back she doesn't that's apologize lie. That that is she's a lie, yeah. shit. That's right. the other I thing about one of hang on two seconds um ish Ishmael is absolutely wonderful. I met Ishmael on Wheelie Chronic. I'm sure you've all seen her. She's got purple hair and she's amazing. Um, on Wheelie Chronic's lives. And she's absolutely, he's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. He has asked what FND is. Now, I obviously know some things about FND, but I don't have FND. So I does can anyone. Tell you. Yeah, I can so tell you. someone. So, Heather, could you answer Ishmael's question for me? Because I want. So. This is a good FND thing to raise awareness as well. Stands for functional neurological disorder. I can't say that second word properly. Neuro, Neuro that word. Neuro Thank you. And it literally means so. Whereas, if you're epileptic and you have a seizure, your brain's starved of oxygen. If it's an FND seizure, your brain isn't always. It can happen, but it's very rare for your brain to be starved of oxygen. With an epileptic seizure literally every single time if you're in a status you're going to need rescue medication some oxygen and watching if it's an fnd you might need some medications to relax your body and fnd can be triggered by pain can be triggered by stress it can be triggered by trauma it can be triggered by seeing something that the brain can't function, it can affect your esophagus, it can affect your legs, it can affect your arms. FND is a very wide range of neuro neurological conditions that don't cause damage to the brain, but mimic damage being done to the brain. So like somebody could suddenly lose the use of their legs. Yeah. Even though their muscles and their nerves there's nothing physically wrong with them. The brain signal gets wired up and does not allow that connection. Whereas with somebody with paralyzed, I might be wrong on this spot. So if, if I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. But with being paralyzed, the connection's still there. It's just broken. It's snapped. Explain that brain is where your brain doesn't connect your central nervous system properly. That's as a, as a, as a, that's, a that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Lucy, so long as you're going to be respectful, you can stay. But the second you stop being respectful, I will just boot you and I'll block you because I'm not dealing with that shit tonight. Okay? End of story. Like, I do Done. also want to say that FND is debilitating. It can completely alter somebody's life. And sometimes it can be life threatening because falls and things like, like this. Like, my sister has fnd i have fnd i'm able to function quite well very rarely do i have problems with the fnd anymore because i've had lots of therapy and rehab and things like that whereas my sister she she needs a lot more support she she's still living in a rehab center but even that like some there, there was a death in the family and that knocked her back massively yeah so it seems like that can affect the fnd whereas that with yeah. epilepsy someone just said things like heat and things like someone Sorry, said they explaining that what you everything that you've explained and that they feel very oh, in the life that you have responded and explained that to them uh diana i, just, yes, you I don't like misinformation and if i'm wrong i very much welcome to be corrected because yeah. we're all human we don't know everything but I do know this was how it was explained to me by my neurologist because I have both epileptic and FND seizures. The only I way I can tell the difference is my level of awareness afterwards. I was uh, right, I, I just want to um, give okay. Beans, uh, Beans, Diana, Sammy and um, the person who mm. I've just cut up, I, I want to give them a chance to speak. So Beans... Uh, sorry, Christmas. Do. Christmas, did you have anything else that you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to go back a few topics. I was trying to jump in um, about the way that she pushes, um, I've got to be careful how I word things, um, medication down the tube. Yeah. Um, one of those medications can certainly make you fly up into the sky. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, 
I know that because I don't know if I can say which one it is, but it begins with C. Um, yeah. I have been given that before, before, um, before a lumbar lumbar puncture because I was just throwing up everywhere um and yeah i was flying up in the sky for about three hours yeah, my so, every day because of her um just having her peg j inserted and i can absolutely verify that that's exactly what happens yeah so if she's pushing I can that as well it happens to me yeah <laughs> if she's pushing that multiple times a day then that's those those seizures could very much well be that they're not actually epileptic seizures and it's her flying higher than the sky that is exactly what i believe is going on with the absolute hand on my heart deep down in my soul that's exactly what i believe is going on same um the muffin man yeah, i yeah, have yeah. exactly that as well and it sucks and i've got spine problems as well it super sucks having spinal problems and problems with your guts is not a fun mix um, beans, I'm aware that you have been sat there very patiently waiting for your turn. So if you'd like to. Hi, I will speak to you all soon. Goodbye. And thank you for having me, Emily. I really appreciate okay, it. Okay. Thank you, Mother Noodle. It's Bye. lovely to hear from you again. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye, darling. Bye, darling. Take care. I love you. Bye. I don't know how to go, but I'm going to work it out. Uh, I'm, I'll see if I can. I'm, I'm done now, but I don't know Isn't how to it? leave. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Is, who's that? Is that Christmas Wonderland that yeah. just said that? Yeah, right, I'll, I'll disconnect you, you as well in. then. Bye. Um, bye, darling. Take bye. care. Thank you. Disconnect. <laughs> yes. Um, right, Beans, I'm aware you've been sat there very patiently waiting. So um, what would you like to say? I just wanted to add on from the FND. Um, I don't have it personally myself, but I'm a disability and mental health advocate here on TikTok. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit onto it for uh, dynamic disabilities. I thought it'd be really um, important to add on as a lot of the disabilities that are linked to FND and the symptoms alongside it um, come, done, come under the category of dynamic. It, is basically where when you're disabled chronically or whatever label that you put yourself under the symptoms that you have um can vary from mild to um moderate to severe day to day so one day you could be totally fine um you could be you know cooking cleaning doing everything yourself and then the next day you could be t absolutely wiped out in bed not being able to do anything um or you could be waking up fine and then slowly throughout the day you're getting worse and worse and worse and then by the end of the day you can't do anything not even you know go to the toilet yourself and uh, that's that happens a lot with especially like FND, Ellis Downler syndrome, MS, things like that. And it's I think it's really important to just know that with dynamic disabilities, they're not mentioned a lot because people see on the outside, oh, somebody's using you know a walking stick one day, and then the next day they're in a wheelchair, and then the next day they're perfectly fine again. And then a lot of people call them fakers, and you you see people like Kirsten and. You you know, you might look at somebody and think, oh, that person looks totally fine, but they're telling all this stuff about how awful their health is, and then you go off and judge them based on that. Obviously, Kirsten's a different, a different topic, but um, for other people, looks are completely different based on yep. what, what people uh, present wise. Can I say, Beans, that's exactly how my conditions Go. Mm. so i can be fine for days weeks on end and then all of a sudden i can't do anything yeah i physically cannot move because one i'm either in pain or two emotionally and mentally where i've been in pain and i've ignored it i'm drained mentally yeah i feel the exact same i think it's a lot to do with triggers as well you can have so many different triggers whether it's weather or medications mixing or maybe even just people and whatever it may be you one day it might be fine the weather but the next day it will be raining and then you get a migraine you know and because you're the triggers are on and off 
you, yeah, you, see. So, so is your health, you know? The heat messes with my AMS symptoms badly. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it does. It always has done. And the cold messes with my arthritis and my joint mobility. And you, it's yeah. like you can never get a break. It's horrible. Yeah, exactly. Someone in chat said fibro. I feel you. <laughs> Fibromyalgia gang. Um, right, Sammy. Uh, Jane, could you mute your mic for me, please, darling? Okay, Sammy, can you I uh, Yeah, Chloe. What do you see? What do you see? Can you mute your mic, please? Of course, I can. I can show my face, of course. So how are you doing? Right, sorry, Chloe. I was literally just about to say, what the heck? Yeah, sorry, Chloe. We go. What did you um, want to I'm say? Have to quick wiggle because um. I feel the attack coming on. Okay, then. Can you drop me off because I currently can't see. My yeah, screen. I will. Can Chloe, you? Are you contact? somewhere safe? Pardon? Are you somewhere safe, darling? Yeah, I'm on my bed, and okay. I have made sure that I'm far enough away from the edge because the other day there on Saturday I fell off it. Okay. That's what I was asking. Can you message one of the girls so they know that you're not feeling well, so you've got someone that you're keeping in contact with while you're going through your attack, please, darling? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll drop it back soon, babe. Um, I hope you're feeling better soon, darling. Love you. Uh, Black Rose has said get on call. So yeah, she is going to... Good. Right, okay. I'm going to drop you down now, okay? Love you. Love you, babe. Uh, right, Sammy. Um... Sorry, it's taken a while to get to you. Uh, what do you want to share, darling? Are you talking about me? Yeah. Uh, my name's Cammy. Oh, Cammy. Right, I can't see that. Even with my glasses, I can't see that. I thought it said Sam. That's why I was getting a bit confused. Um, well, I don't think I really have much to talk about, but I can answer any questions, I suppose. I mean, I'm getting my tooth removed tomorrow, and earlier today, I had to have my paw accessed to check my buds um, for, like, neutropenia and stuff. <coughs> so I'm getting that. I'm getting my tooth pulled tomorrow. Uh, that's one thing that's happening to me, but I don't know. What do we really want to talk about? Should we talk about Kirsten? Yeah, that's basically what we're, what we're trying to do um, and sharing our experiences. And then obviously we've got we've got quite a few new people in tonight that I, I know that at least one of them is um, someone who was a follower of hers who has come to our side. I know there's one person who messaged me earlier, um, a, a very detailed message who I'm going to speak to um, tomorrow, who knows I'm going to speak to them tomorrow. Um, but they're, I know they're in on the live. And then there's other people that haven't had the courage to come up and speak up till now, but are happy to come up and speak today, um, yes. which is what I always want. I want to have a safe space where people feel like they could, can come up and speak and share their truth and share how their feeling and things like that. And also, so we've got people to answer those questions because unlike Kirsten's lives, I would like to actually share the truth about these conditions so that people know what the, the truth is instead of the bullshit that she spews out, which isn't the truth at all. Yeah. Um, Nic nicotine breakfast. Have you had experience with Kirsten or did you want to talk about something else? Um, it, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't about Kirsten exactly, but it does kind of tie in um, based okay. on what the conversation has been going towards. Um, I just want to say thanks to Heather and to Beans as well for bringing it up really and talking about it because um, I got diagnosed with FND last year so i'm still fairly new to the world <laughs> um of chronic illness and i don't actually know that much about it but it's a really lonely world and to be able to come on here and hear people talking and 
being there for each other is actually really lovely. Um, and it does, t it does tie in with Kirsten a little bit because obviously I did follow her for a while. I fully believed everything she was saying because I had no reason not to. Um, I very much give the benefit of the doubt because I know what it's like to not be believed and to hear her fake claiming other people despite the fact that she should know how it feels to be fake claimed if she really did have a chronic illness um, it, it didn't sit right so you know obviously I've been researching and it's not something I obviously want dragged into but it, it just it was quite poignant to hear people talking about different chronic illnesses that they have and how it's always got to be a one-up or you know and especially with something like F&D because obviously that's quite um, close to me personally to hear that she's been faking something like that really did set set me off on a little bit of rage <laughs> yeah that's that's the overall opinion from most of us um i have um well i have eds among many other conditions and she claims to have eds yet has no markers for any of it has no symptoms apart from she she says she's in pain and that she dislocates all the time but has never dislocated on live has never had to have a relocation either done like her doing it herself or her having to go to hospital to have it done and i know myself like i'm old and most <laughs> of my joints, that bloody bruises prove she doesn't have it yeah most of my joints has, have got come out um at least once like every single one of my joints has come out at least once and I know myself that once you've dislocated a joint once, it will continue to dislocate at a regular rate. The more often it dislocates, the more often it will continue to dislocate. So the misinformation she was sharing about EDS is something that got my goat. And then as other people in the comments have said, like you can see the comments are just flying with people having like the exact same situation with her with, um, for example, I don't know if you saw this. She drop did a foot. live, and she can't she get said, dropped foot being paralysed. Sorry, Emily. Sorry. She did a live and was talking about autism and was saying that autistic people just need to get a grip because she's got autism and she understands that the world isn't going to cater to her, so she can control her meltdowns. And all autistic people can if they choose to. Wow. Which is obviously going to get people's goats because no, they can't. <laughs> That's absolute bullshit. That's, That's like saying a two-year-old can control their temper. They can't. A, a two-year-old cannot control a meltdown any more than an autistic person can. It's the exact same brain chemistry that goes into it that their brain hits a certain point and they physically cannot get out of that cycle of anger and upset and hurt and so they get lost in this cycle of having a meltdown the same as a two-year-old does and you can talk as much as you want to a two-year-old that's having a meltdown you ain't going to get through to them until they've calmed down they can't just not have meltdowns you will never meet a two-year-old that has never had a meltdown i can promise you hand on heart that it will never happen the thing autistic. that gets people the most is the fact that kirsten is getting all this attention obviously for stuff that she well apparently doesn't have based on the evidence that you guys have whereas people who do have these illnesses are struggling to get any medical help whatsoever i was given a website i was admitted to hospital for three weeks on the basis of an fnd diagnosis that i hadn't yet been given but that's what it ended up being um and then i was discharged with absolutely no follow-up support none they gave me a website to go to and said pretty much there you go see you later so to see her getting all of this support and guidance and money and advice and it's just really quite jarring it's like we're all sat here genuinely suffering with something that god if i could give it to her if she wants it that bad have it you know and just sorry just a button i live very close to not gonna leak where she lives or anything but i live very close to kirsten i um, within the vicinity of the same doctors and things like that. I cannot, for the life of me, have the same medical attention as her. And with her claiming that she has a Lostana syndrome, I can't get any of that help. Hello? Like, I am not seeing physios daily and, like, getting help with my legs. The hell? Like, the audacity of this woman. <laughs> 
she, well, she, I want to say she refused something. to do the physio because it was too hard. That was her reasoning yeah. for not doing physio was because it was too hard. Oh, if I lost the use of my legs and someone said to me, doing physio will mean you can walk again, I would do the physio. I'd do it 50 times a day if I had to yeah. because that would mean I'd get my freedom back. Hell yeah, I'd do it. She refused oh, yeah. because she couldn't be bothered. Like, I just want to say on the autism thing, so... I'm autistic. I, I, they used to call it Asperger's because I'm lower down the scale now. It's all autism now. My sons are autistic. We, we're all very. Not one of us can control our meltdowns. Not one of us. And for her, that did make me really angry because I deal with multiple meltdowns with my son daily because he is that far on the scale that he just doesn't understand so many different things you know my nieces are autistic my nephews are autistic so i've dealt with autism all my life because my mum she only fosters children with complex needs because there's hardly any foster carers that will and it just it it made me really angry the way she come out of that it really did because they're called meltdowns they're not called tantrums and there's a reason for that yeah. You can see the difference. I mean, yeah. I had a meltdown yesterday because I, everybody was talking to me and I felt so overstimulated. I was like, I can't remember what I was doing. Go away. And I nearly just stomped my foot. I'm not even going to lie because I couldn't handle everybody talking to me all at once. Uh, I'm autistic and it offends me to see people faking it because, like, why would you want to fake having, like, a mental problem? Uh, well, it's not like a mental illness, but it, it's like on the mental scale, really, isn't it? Um, and as I say, I'm autistic myself. I've been, um, I was suspected autistic when I was three, and then I actually got diagnosed um, only about a year or two ago. Um, I was on the waiting list for about four years, and... Um, I look at people who fake it and I'm like, why would you want to fake something like this? We can't, we can't even interact with people properly, some of us, because of how our brain works. So, and sometimes we can't even leave the house or come out of our bedrooms. Yeah. I don't get I why mean, you want to fake that. My sister, Rattlesnake Kiki, who's just above me, I think, will yeah. tell you. All of my teenage, my childhood and my teenage years, I was branded as a naughty child. Same. And I got expelled from schools for meltdowns that they said, uh, thought was naughty behaviour. I went for an OCD assessment and found out that actually the behaviours I did was autism and Tourette's syndrome. And that wasn't until I was 27. Ooh. Now my sister will tell you, literally the abuse i used to get as because i was a weirdo as a teenager and my sister too she used to get the same thing she's autistic although she doesn't want to admit it hey eh, kiki <laughs> but the stigma around it even now to this day is is still awful so i don't understand why somebody who is claimed to be autistic would give out a representation like that and cause more stigma yeah like mm. I I didn't get bullied per se, but I haven't had like a proper friend ever throughout school. And in primary school, I always used to be like sat on my own and I'd ask to join games and everyone would hate me. Everyone hated me in school and I had no idea why. Same. Oh, Cammie. I'm so sorry, darling. Same. I was the same in school. I was never the... How do I word it probably? The chosen <coughs> child, if that makes sense. Yeah. I was never the chosen child. I was never the popular kid. I was never, you know, the it child. I was the geeky child that, you know, liked to read books and play chess. And I admit I was a bit of a computer geek. And I'm not going to deny that. But for me, trying to make friends, I... My problem is, is I latch on to people. That sounds so wrong, but I'm sure you guys know what I mean. Weirdo. Really? <laughs> so, I, I, I make friends, but I find it difficult to keep friends, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I, my, I trust people 
far too much, way too much. And then I get hurt and it's like a whole different level of hurt. Like a whole different level. It's like a sting. But for me, in school, I was always the weird kid. I was the kid with braces. I was the kid with glasses. I was a fat kid at one point. You know, I was the kid with the weird sister. Oh, you're her sister. Uh, I ain't going near you. Your family's weird. That's what my life was like. The kid with epilepsy oh. that nobody understood because it was absent seizures getting knocked over by cars. Yeah. It was horrible. So I, 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 get, I get where you're coming from, Tammy. I completely get where you're coming from. And, you know, I'm sorry you've had to go through that because as, as an adult now, that has... Traumatised me, absolutely traumatised me. Yeah. But as an adult, you know, it, it's made me <laughs> get to the point where I don't want to go out because I can't, I say I can't leave them. Yeah. I'm not I hate people. Not that I hate them, I don't like people. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm dreadful with it. See, this is the thing, like, Rebecca, the mum with ASD, and she's just put it perfectly succinctly, the amount of times I wished I was normal, I can't even count. And I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure, yeah. I think I can speak for all of us when I say, say, yeah. I would give anything to be normal. I'd give it, like, I, I walk with a stick. I used to walk quite far. Like, I look out my bedroom window and I can see the mountains. And there was a time where I walked across all of them. And I cannot, I, I can barely even walk down the road down. Um, because my mobility is so poor, because my muscle, m my back is so screwed and I have so much pain from it that just walking down the road to the shop and back is, I might as well be running a marathon. That's and I would give anything to be able to have that mobility and that freedom to be able to go out and get out of the house and go wherever I want and do whatever I want. And I've even had it suggested to me that it would probably be better for me if I had a wheelchair because I would probably get out of the house more if I had a wheelchair, but I'm not ready to accept that yet. And then when we look at someone like Kirsten, and we know that there is nothing actually wrong with her. We know that she's actually capable of doing so much more. And even if, say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play devil's advocate and say everything that she says is wrong with her is wrong with her. All of it's true. She could still be a positive and active member of the chronic ill community yes. she doesn't have to just wallow every single day in bed but she chooses to do that or and, give false information yeah if and he, that's the thing she will share false information she will literally if you go on there and like i went on there and said i've got eds and she questioned my diagnosis she questioned the medication i'm i was on mm -hmm. i am on rather I'm not the only person she's done this with. She's done it with several other people uh, specific to EDS. I know that she's done this with everyone, with every other condition as well, but specific with EDS, she's done it with several other people too. She will question what meds you're on. She will question your diagnosis. She will question how you got your diagnosis, who in your family has also got it, so where it could have come from. And then it will be, well, I suffer with this and I suffer with that. And she will literally, like she gave me the very definition of having the hypermobility type and Marfan's, but she has no symptoms of either. You can tell just by looking at her, she doesn't have those symptoms. And for me, I just sit there and Emily, just think. Yeah. You're, I've just tried to reply to somebody and they keep saying your life has ended. Yeah, see, it did that with mine. It said I couldn't comment. You might be shadow banned or comment banned. I might, yeah. Uh, probably, because I'm a troublemaker. Might surprise I don't me. Care. <laughs> yeah, exactly, becoming me. You can't have heads and marfins. No, you can't. Um, yes. No, you cannot. Granny, if you message me first, because I will forget what your username is, so message me and I will message you back. Um, right. I, Emily, uh, I want to also say... <clears throat> now, sure. Emily, you, you've seen my medical records, you know, because I've got no problems. But I was on end-of-life, palliative end-of-life care because the, my local hospital deemed that there was nothing more they could do for me but make me comfortable. Now, as a mother, regardless if I had children, well, I think that did help a bit, but I searched this country up and down 
for a doctor to help me. I'm now off end of life care. I'm still on palliative, but I'm on end of life. Why anybody would sit there and accept it without trying to get extra help is beyond me. And the fact that most of us will ask for this extra help. My, my partner will succinctly, very, very clearly put it. When we all ask, why would she do this? Why would she do this? Why would she say this? Why would she lie? Attention. His, resp yeah, his response is attention, money. Good press, good and bad press is exactly the same because it's all gives, given her attention. And so she can be the center of attention, not just have attention, but be the center of it all. Is uh, she actually like, getting medical treatment? treatment? Yeah, and Christian is the one, my partner Christian, I won't turn the camera in because he's just finished work. He's the one who told me she was a bad egg and that I shouldn't be following her and I shouldn't be listening to her. And I didn't listen to him and he was right and I was wrong. Are you happy yes. I've said it on live? Did you hear you that? Happy she now? actually admitted it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally smirking. He's smirking and I said, are you happy now? And he was like... <laughs> Do you know what I've just uh, noticed, Emily? Yeah. Every time your partner comes in or you're around your boy, you go from your Midlands accent to your Welsh accent. <laughs> I do. Uh, Diana, sorry, Diana wanted to say something. So, Diana, shoot. So, um, I'm diagnosed with epilepsy and status epilepticus. Now, last, last, last Friday, so Friday just gone, yeah. I had a very, very serious seizure. Very serious. I could have actually, like, not been here anymore. It was that bad. It was horrible. Let me. Uh, and I don't remember anything from before the seizure or after it. Uh, and it's very scary. Um... They actually had to, like, put medications in me. I won't mention the medications because I don't want you to get shadow banned or anything, Emily. But, obviously, medications were given quite quickly. And it still took them 10 minutes to get them under control. To then have... Kay, um, do what she did, right, that made me very angry, like, and it's not the only thing that's, that Kay has done to me, there is other things, um, but there, there's police involvement, because that's how bad it is. Would you be okay to reach out to me or Sally? Um, I've already reached out to Georgie. Um, can't reach out on the Discord because I'm on um, timeout because they feel like my mental health needs to um, improve a little bit. And I... I understand why I was put on timeout. She's explained it to me, so... Yeah, I already follow yeah. you. Me and you have been following each other for ages. Um, yeah. Because we're on level five of friendship. So if you send me a message, then I can either... You can um, talk to... Ooh. Discuss it with me. And you can discuss it with her instead, because it's kind of... There's me, Heather, Sally, Kiki, and a couple of others whose names I won't use that are all working together to get this done. Um, so yeah. you can message any of us and we are all more than happy to, if you were happy f to provide evidence, well, if you can provide evidence and you're happy for your name to be shared, we'll share it. If you're not happy, we won't. Like if you send us like screenshots of messages, we'll cover your name as well as anyone else's names. If you don't want them to be on there, we're more than happy to do that. Cause I remember you, cause I remember your face. <laughs> yeah. When your face came up, I was like, hang on, I remember her. Yes. You're, you're very aware of the life where I openly talked about status epilepticus and things like that. Yeah. Can I ask something? Yes. Go, go on. Um, 
Do we know how many and what conditions specifically Kirsten can, um, what do you call it, claims that she has? We do. I have a list. Can you tell me? I, I, I can there tell you one of them. I can tell you one of them. Probably be quicker to tell you which ones she hasn't got. Yeah. Right. Bear, bear with me two seconds. Let me get the list up. Uh, two seconds, because I will find... Takes two seconds to get the list, but it will take about ten minutes to go through it, guys. Yeah, um, Meg, apparently she's on high as well. <laughs> Sorry about the noise I keep making, by the way. I have involuntary um, noises and movements. There is <laughs> something I want to say. There is something I really want to say. Right. I have Tourette's, don't worry. <laughs> and same, you find it, it. It took me two seizures before I had an EEG. And then while I was having that EEG, I had a seizure. That's how I got diagnosed with epilepsy, and that was five years ago. Hmm. Yep, I had one major seizure. Well, I was in status. And diagnosed with epilepsy from there. You can't be diagnosed without having the shit stuck on your head. I mean, the stuff stuck on your head, sorry. And that yeah, the EEG, the EEG, the EEG, the EEG. E, the EEG flu <laughs> is what I call it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's that really stuff. To get off after. It is horrible to get off of your skin. Horrible. Guys, you want to know a trick to get that off? I'm allergic to that sort of stuff, so I a always bit of, have Believe problems. it or not, a bit of cooking oil. Yes. Now I know for when I next have my EEG, I'll <laughs> cook it all up put it on the head. I usually I use nail varnish on. remover on mine. It oh, worked really no, well. Crazy. <laughs> that was the stung. Oh, yeah. uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil works as well, by the way. Yeah, I use coconut oil. Or um, lemon. Just put a bit of lemon and rub it. Don't ask. What's wrong with you people using attic things? Literally. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> You know right. what, I'm going to let Emily know, I'm dropping out the box, because as you can hear, I'm about to bath, I stink, okay? Not even going to lie, I fucking stink. That box smell a bitch. Kiss my ring. Can you hear me? Come on, teacher. <laughs> I She's such a nice sister. I can hear you, Cammy. Okay, you know me and Kirsten's um, paralysis, quotation mark, paralysis um, stories are quite similar. Um... Kirsten claims that she's paralysed from tumours on the spine and mine is the exact same thing. I became paralysed from the waist down because of tumours on my spine. So I find that quite odd. Yeah, you told, it. you said that on, I think it was our, Sounds. it was either on my last live or it was on mm. Sally's live because I was like, that's where it came from. That's where, because that's the story I was told. So, right, I've got the list. But obviously, if I come off the live, it pauses it, so I can't read okay. it out. So, I've got to work out how I can do this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a few different people have heard a few different reasons as to why she's paralysed. Yeah, yeah, I heard it was something to do with Alzheimer's. And oh my god, that's a new one. And it, not. <laughs> and it can't it be FND, funny. because FND doesn't paralyse you permanently. I mean... Can it? I don't know, and I'm actually quite worried about how I might be about to no. find out. Not no, it's like a seizure as well. Like uh, some FND sort of can cause FND can cause paralysis. Yeah. However, it is usually temporary, but you do have to do physiotherapy to yeah. to remind That's... the muscles of what they're supposed to do. Basically, oh, then, like it, it, it can't be fully permanent. Wait. What can do people with FND suffer with cataplexy? Uh, I don't know, but may all the blessings be free as said. FND <laughs> can cause transient paralysis. Oh, what's that? I don't think I've heard of that one. My mum has and it, and it's crazy. Transient even noises can, and goes. even oh. noises can cause it. Um, sorry, Alice. Um, and Julie, right, let me get to Julie first, because she's been here for ages and we haven't had a chance, she hasn't had a chance to speak, and then we'll move to you, Alice. Julie. 
fine. I was just wanting to say about obviously we we're talking about the autism and and that and that. I'm autistic myself. I'm the same as um, Heather. I was diagnosed with Asperger's, but it took my mum till I was thirteen year old for schools to take me seriously. Yeah, I was just tell oh you're badly behaved. You're badly behaved. And when she said, oh, you can control your meltdowns, I wish I could. I'm going through a lot in the new way, them. And it made me so angry, and that's why I'm glad you are all doing these lives to raise awareness. Yeah. I can see her on my back, like my throwaway I could, but I don't really watch her too often, especially after the other night. Um, but um, like, I wish I could control my meltdowns. <coughs> we actually got to the point now that my twin is letting me have my nieces to stay them home. That's taken me seven years. My niece is seven year old now, my other niece is four. It's taken me seven years to my brother-in-law to trust me to have the wings of a night. And it's not today where that I'm a danger. It's just because I was struggling to control my meltdowns. And that is why I'm so angry with saying, oh, you can just control them. I wish I could. Yeah, see, this is the thing with, with one of the aspects of us raising awareness is that she's spreading misinformation about chronic conditions and more specifically about chronic conditions that we have to fight so long to get a diagnosis for. So it's not a simple thing that uh, anyone can get diagnosed and it takes you one blood test to get diagnosed with. It is literally things that you have to battle for years to get a diagnosis of that she's spreading misinformation about. And in her point, from her point of view, you can only have the condition in the way that she has it, otherwise you're faking. That's it. I'm yeah, still fighting. Not everybody's the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still fighting to try and find out what's going on with my, my pain levels. Okay, I mean, I'm in pain actually 24 7 now. And I've started using mobility scooters when I go out to my local town to do my shopping. Because of how bad it's got. And I've been bullied, bullied for about six months now because I was using a walking stack and it's hard. I know I how hard it is. I um, I can't sit up for longer than two minutes without back support. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult. Yeah, but that was all I was just wanting to say. I'm in my bed soon. <laughs> Okay, darling. Okay. Julie, before you go, can I ask yeah. you a question? Yeah. When you put your hand out straight, does it do this? Sometimes I. The handcuff got hypermobility. Yeah, Mine see, too. EDS and autism, autistic spectrum disorder go hand in hand with one another. Mm -hmm. I hope, then, I, I hope, am I going to ask about it because um, I have noticed that, but the day, I have been telling, the hang I've got hypermobility, but the main thing that's causing me to bother the new is I was playing a, um, adapted rugby, it's a touch rugby, and somebody accidentally knocked into me. And I lost my fat and thud it down the ground and I now have a compression fracture on my back and oh. my lovely scoliosis as well. Yeah, I have scoliosis as well. some height now because of it. Julie, if you, you message me, if you send me a message, I can send you some links for some sites um, that will give you some more information about EDS yes. and that might point you in the right direction of where you want to ask the doctor to look into for yourself because my EDS, I know that it doesn't, luckily it doesn't with every single patient with EDS, but my EDS causes me chronic pain. I'm in pain 24 seven. Yeah. It just, 
depends on what my level is at that time at the moment my level is very high but that's because i had a pops attack for three hours on saturday so all my muscles on my back tensed up and mm. they're still all tense up and killing now mm. Yeah. I'll give you a message in the morning once yeah. I got off. Send me a message and I'll send you a, I'll send you as many links as I can to pages where they could give you some more information <laughs> and like a direction in which you might want to look into to see. Yeah. Um, because they do go hand in hand. It's something that I didn't know and my partner keeps well, on saying. With everyone, Emily. Well, but, Christian keeps on saying, he was like, oh, you've definitely got ADHD, you've definitely got ADHD, you've definitely got that dyspraxia thing because you fall over mm -hmm. all the time. And it's like, yes, I probably have. But, like, you know, as a girl trying to get diagnosed with that, what's mm -hmm. the chances? Stop giving me all the Pokemon cards, goddammit. <laughs> my friend, my family thinks I'm ADHD, um, ADHD as well. Yes. So ADHD and autism and Tourette's syndrome all comorbid together you cannot have one of the other conditions one of those conditions without having comorbid conditions so whereas i have Tourette syndrome asperger or autism whatever the fuck it's called now and ocd my oldest has ocd a tick disorder and adhd my youngest has Tourette syndrome autism and ocd and I didn't know until my son's diagnosis that there's actually, sorry, <laughs> there's actually a link between all of them. And it was my neurologist slash tick woman, I can't remember what you call them, who told me this, that you also, there's a very, very strong link between those three conditions and stomach conditions and allostanons. My uh, my ex partner um, lied about having autism to that and I think it was OCD. Sorry. Um, made me not angry. Not That's what I hate it when people lie about things. See, the thing is, like, ooh, Michael, the other, the, ooh, ooh, I think it's because we're talking about it, the other people with Tourette's here who know what I, what I know about Tourette's. If somebody says they have Tourette's, ask them for the full name. Because it's not Tourette's. There's a full yeah. name for it. And they can never give it if they are not diagnosed with it. Aye. I've got AIDS. I haven't got AIDS. Sorry. <laughs> she has. <I'm> no, <laughs> that, that, that was yeah. all I was just like to come on and say. I'll drop it like somebody else. Hey, Thank you very much, Julie. But yeah, well, send me a message and I'll try and signpost you as best as uh -huh. I can. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Yeah. 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 See you later. I'll see you later, darling. Take care. Bye. Bye. Uh, becoming me. Um, I don't know what's going on with the mess with the comments. I think someone's flagged us. Um, five guesses as to who. My minions. Um. Oh, and no. there's, hang on, wait a second, ask Kirsten for tips. She seems to get diagnosed with everything really quickly, 100%. Um, oh, God, right, God. yeah, I want to try and read. Right, hang on. Uh, where's Heather gone? Has Heather dropped again? Right, I'll be back in two seconds. I'm going to send this list to Heather, and then hopefully she'll be able to read it out. Two seconds. Ba, ba, ba. About like okay. tick disorders, there's one. Um, there's a few different tick disorders. There's Tourette's, obviously, but and yes. then you have like you have persistent motor or vocal tick disorder, and then there's yes. a few other ones. Um, I think I have a tick disorder from my autism, and I, I don't know if it's like ticks or if it's just stims, because. A lot of the time, I don't realise I'm doing them, and sometimes I can I can tr I can control them, but I get this raging anger build up inside of me if I don't do it. Also, is it more of a premonitory urge, or is it a case of you feel like you do them? Um, it's a bit of both. Because with um, a lot of tick disorders, and especially Tourette's and stuff, you get usually a premonitory urge um, to complete a tick. And I think 
obviously I'm only basing this off my experience is the fact that the more I've got a warning experience huh? yeah it's like, it's like an edge and then um, I can control them but like I, they don't like they don't just happen like if you know what I mean I make like just noises I don't say words really um that's a misconception yeah a very big misconception. People assume like Tourette's is swearing, etc. Yeah. yeah. But that's not. I want to start with motors. I want to start with motor ticks and then they can progress. Because you've got like yeah. pans and pandas start. as well. Oh, mm-hmm. Which are uh, also immune yeah, diseases so. that cause ticks. Um, and they're caused by infection. So yeah. pandas is paediatric autoimmune neuro something disorder associated with strep so it's specifically strep that causes it and yeah. then you've got pans which can be any infection so you can get flu you can get some sort of virus you can get anything and pans and pandas have the exact same symptomology the only difference is the origin so um pandas is specifically strep that's why it's got the s at the end whereas pans it can be any infection at all like <laughs> bacterial yeah. or whatever but usually it occurs in children and adolescents like you get it the infection in like adolescents or in childhood but there are people who aren't diagnosed until later on because a lot of doctors don't know about pans and pandas yeah and so I, I don't know if i can it. keep talking because i wanted to talk about the tube feeding stuff with chris pearson because i've been tube fed now for like eight years maybe nine years i'm not sure like it was about six months after i moved into this flat and i've been here for nine years that i finally got the first feeding tube before that i was in and out of any like every week or so getting fluids and anti-sickness and being sent home and palmed off and it was only when they thought i had um they thought i had oh what's it the infection lower abdominal pain in your right side my brain's fried it's too okay. late but um they thought i had appendicitis that's it they thought i had appendicitis so i was under the surgeons yeah. rather than being under the medics and then the surgeons were like yeah we're not letting you leave until you've had a gastro review and then gastro gave me an nj tube because they were like um you know you you can't even hold down water there's no point giving you an nj tube just to see if you'll tolerate it because you can't tolerate a sip of water um but what i wanted to say is like i've been in the groups that she's in where she's asking for feed and she asks in some posts she asks for multiple different feeds and she said and she'll say stuff like oh it can be any peptide feed or any elemental feed so peptide or elemental means that the feed is kind of partially broken down so it's been through a process so that um if you're fed into your intestines most of the time you will need a feed that's been broken down because you're skipping your stomach and your stomach does a lot of stuff to the food before it hits your intestines and obviously the jejunum is the second part of your small intestine as well so you're skipping out quite a lot of the digestion process but i've been on three feeds in total and every time you change from one feed to another feed regardless of the fact that they're all peptide or they're all elemental you have to start from square one and go all the way back down to like five or ten minute hour and build all the way back up to your normal feed rate so there is no way that she could have three or four different brands of feed in that flat and run them at the full rate without being severely ill because like if you change feed without going down and building back up because the ingredients are different and the chemical compounds are different it will make you so ill you'll have like diarrhea constipation or both you'll have really severe bloating you'll have abdominal pain it'll be unbearable like 
and it, even if you don't have bead for a little while so if i'm in a flare up i have to run like diorolite or an electrolyte solution rather than my feed because in a flare up where i can't get anything in it's more important to get fluid in and be hydrated than it is to get food in because i can correct a hypo with like rubbing stuff on my gums or putting stuff down my tube but i can't correct that severe of dehydration at home it would mean going in for IV fluids um and the way that sh she's asking for a different feed after different feed after different feed and even if you see her put it up which is only recently because people have said she doesn't run feed sometimes you'll see her run a nutrition feed sometimes you'll see her run an abbott feed they're two completely different feed companies um, sometimes you'll see her run things which I know for a fact have lactose in and she says she can't have lactose feed. Um, she's got three different feed pumps. There are only three feed companies in the UK. There's Amica, which is the name of the pump. I think they're called Freenius something. I can't pronounce the name. I've, I've never been with them. They're very small. They don't supply very many people and most of the people with them are being switched to Nutrition anyway then you've got Nutrition and Abbott which kind of compete so if you've ever had like the Nutrition shakes you'll have Ensure or you'll have 40 Sip. 40 Sip are made by Nutrition and Ensure are made by Abbott and they kind of compete for areas of the UK because obviously like the more people they get on tube feeds the more money that company is making because they're an external private company. Um, she'll run Nutrition Feed one day, Abbott Feed the next, she'll run a feed with like two calories per mil, then she'll run a feed with one calorie per mil, she'll yes. run 1.5 sometimes and it's like you can't do that you, you'll just completely screw up your digestive system and then another thing i wanted to point out she called out really wrongly a big creator who has cystic fibrosis on here and mm. she made a video I about it this. and she said she spoke about people with um feeding tubes the gastroparesis they can't eat at all and that's not true at all so sometimes i can eat soft food sometimes i can't sometimes i can drink sometimes i can't but my team specifically have said to me and i know they do because my team are the intestinal failure team for all of wales so i'm just outside of cardiff but there i know someone who was all the way up in north wales who was actually closer to manchester than she was to cardiff hospital but because she was in Wales, she had to be driven all the way down for about six or seven hours in an ambulance to Cardiff to go on home TPN. So the doctors there are like really knowledgeable about gastroparesis, intestinal failure, all of those things. And they're like, if you can do it, because what little motility you've got left, you want to keep that. Yeah. If you stop eating altogether, you're gonna completely lose that and then you're probably never gonna eat again. So I can eat a little bit of mashed potato or something one day and then another day I might not even be able to have a sip of water and everything is down my tube. But like, I don't want to lose it. And there are times when people will eat something they shouldn't because you can't expect someone to just never eat normal food ever again, it's like, it's well, ingrained in everything. It's a social it's a thing. It's, isn't it? You don't want to lose yeah. your independence. You want to. Exactly. You don't. You're going to go out and you're going to have fun and you're going to be in pain anyway. So, what's the point in, you know, you're going to eat a little bit. It's going to give you some diarrhea, but you're going to be on the toilet <laughs> later anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. so I'll eat stuff that I know I'll throw up and I. I yeah exactly yeah. sometimes it's but worth she it takes, like she takes it to the extreme she's drinking energy drinks nearly every day and <laughs> mixing her meds it's it's not good and i i feel yeah. like for me like every time that i get a new med i'm vigorously looking at the side effects making sure it's not mixing with any of my meds you know things like this and call it paranoia if you will but 
for for her to not check any of her medication, see if it's mixing. It's not even that. Like she's not together, flushing, like, flushing between not medications. Flushing, like, which, yeah, exactly, exactly. If you're putting them down your feeding tube, this is just what I was taught. So some of my meds I know can mix because they've been given IV together, and I'm like, if they could be given IV together, I'm pretty sure they can go into my digestive system together. Like IV would be a much worse scenario if they mix. But yeah. I got told that you have to flush between meds because you don't know if those chemical compounds will break down different in your yeah. tube. And the way, like it likes been said earlier, if you're pushing certain medications that fast down your tube into your intestines, we know it's not in your intestines, we know it's an NG, and we know a lot of it's coming out. But if you were to push, say, like, you know, a group of drugs that begins with O that fast into your digestive system straight into your intestines it would hit you like a ton of bricks like I'm on yeah. one medication for anxiety that's another group of addictive drugs um, but it's designed for longer term use and I'm on mm. um, patches now so I don't I only use like the group of drugs that begins with O for like breakthrough pain for infections and things like that but I have to be really careful because like it'll knock me out if I push them as fast as here all together in the same syringe I would be out for two or three hours like completely non-functional and we notice that she has her so-called hypos immediately after giving meds um, yep. and um, you know, like she's giving those types of meds together without flushing in between really fast. And that's obviously what's happening. It's not a hypo, it's not a seizure. She's just hell of a lot high of as a kite. As well. Yeah, see, I just yeah. want to um, bring something up that someone's commented, and this there is evidence of this. Wait, so um, I'm, not, I'm not speaking out the top of my yeah. head. There's evidence, there's actually like screenshots of messages. Oh of her doing this she Wait, pushed really quick, really quick 12 um, one second cammy she pushed 12.5 mils of the o medication and her excuse for it was she had no idea that the pharmacist because it apparently it was a pharmacy mistake she had no idea the pharmacist had messed up and she'd never had it before so she didn't pay attention because the only time she had it was when she was in hospital and someone else did her medication. I'm sorry, but you know the difference between 2.5 mils and 12.5 mils of that medication. And 12.5 mils of that medication will unalive you. If, yeah, if, you, have, if, if you, you have a feeding mils. tube, you hang will, on, hang on. and it's meant to use 2.5 mils of a medication, they will give you either 2.5 mil or 5 mil syringes for that specific medication. Yeah, exactly. They won't right. give you big syringes for every medication because I've exactly. got 10s, 5s and 2.5s for my meds because certain liquids are in certain amounts. So um, there's no way because you would be given that medication and the syringe in the box together. No. So there's no way you could mix it up. She would have a 2.5 mil syringe in the box with that liquid medication. Yeah. She, they wouldn't put like a 20 mil syringe in that box. One, it wouldn't fit, and two, it would be completely irresponsible. Yeah, Heather, what did you I want to say point on that? Out that when she does her IV medication, oh. it's always cloudy. No IV medication is cloudy. It may be a different colour, but it's never cloudy. And she said in a live that I was in before I got blocked that she doesn't have to be completely sterile with ephemeral line, which well, is complete yeah. bullshit. Line. Bullshit. <laughs> she, she, one, she has ephemeral line at home, which they don't do. They, they, they don't like ephemeral lines anyway. I've had one and they really hate them because the area that they're placed is so prone to infection compared to other types of central line. But yeah. you, you, you do not not have to be. And that's the type of mis misinformation that can kill someone. If someone's come home with some kind of central line and they see her saying, oh, you don't have to be completely sterile, you just have to be clean. Oh, like, shit. no. 
you would get yeah. sepsis straight away and i saw her in that live doing that now um i don't know because there's different kinds of um what they call cannulas in different areas of the uk but you know like the octopus extensions that they yeah. put on the end of a cannula she had a pink one like i saw the octopus coming off but then i saw a pink cannula just at the end of that she was trying to make sure you couldn't see it but you could just about see it no central line has pink on because mm. pink and like blue it's yellow blue pink green and then white or gray and they show the gauges like the width of the cannula so yeah. it's pink for a reason it's pink to show everyone that that's what gauge it is because people might be using a different brand or be coming from a different country but universally across the board like even in america they still go from yellow which is like pediatric that they put in infants to blue which is mostly peds or adults with small veins to pink which is the most common and then to green which is if they need to give blood products they need a green or higher but yeah it was pink no yeah. no femoral line is going to be pink yeah and I, just really, yeah. I just want to jump on some of the comments so the the central lines the femoral line is a central line the ends of the line are always different so that if in an emergency something was to happen and the paramedics or a doctor needed to access that line they know by the color and the shape of that the end of that line that it's a, a central line yeah yeah exactly I just want to jump on the comments um emily I'm, I'll, I'll be back in two minutes all right, Heather. I'll read that thing for you. Yeah, right. I, I can Emily see a comment has... saying about reusing needles as well. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll get to that in a sec. She... Right, so Emmy has said, I can't believe, given her history, they'd be given her CD medication in the first place. Right, now, as far as we are aware, she, well, f first, let's break it down. To start off with, it is unfortunately incredibly easy to get all of the medications that she takes or that she purportedly takes on the internet. It shouldn't be as easy as it is. I literally searched on Google and I found two websites. It's very simple. And I literally just had to answer a couple of questions and they said they were going to send me a prescription. So it's very easy. I would never do that. I just wanted to see how easy it was. Um, also, her daddy says that they're in a locked cabinet now we all know from watching her lives that they're not they're on her drug trolley and she gives them to herself all the time so that's absolute bull crap but yes any doctor given her history would not prescribe that medication to her because of her history and because of how she's gone through that history what she has used for that history they wouldn't give her a controlled drug uh, may all beings be free has said if it's cloudy you haven't dissolved it correct uh, you'd never have a femoral line in the community that's kind that is correct however you can go home with a femoral line if you are indeed on end of life care and you have a nurse caring for you then you can have a femoral line in the community but it's very strict Yes, now not being no, sterilized could literally. Yes, a nurse and they can only give the medication for a pump, and I'm from experience. Yeah. Now, not being sterile could literally unalive her. Yes, it could. Um, I don't think she's prescribed half of the stuff. I think she gets it online. Um, they need, we need our patients to be 100% flat when they have a femoral line placed or removed. Exactly. And she fell off her sofa the other day which would have meant that it would have ripped out and there was no B L O O D anywhere it was her bed which was even higher ah there we go it was a bed that she fell off i thought it was a sofa um right now hang on bear with me i'm just trying to go through the comments um she lied about the c word yep she did and she's lied about end of life care she said that she was then she wasn't now she's saying she is again i don't know where she's at with that one um you have to use an septic an aseptic technique and be completely sterile with central lines yep 
this is the other thing about her sharing misinformation that she's telling people you don't have to be sterile with it when you very much need to because otherwise it can lead to very very bad things um and yes i don't know if you saw that um all the ladies that are on here obviously i know heather and kiki saw this but she there is a video that proves this again of her on live saying you can reuse a needle so long as it's on the, sa the same person it's perfectly fine yep which obviously said you can't only, you cannot um, reuse needles she, never reuse needles yeah. ever she said only um, like blood taking needles not cannulas and she uh, said that amy that only got like, like, an one infection because it was she said Amy only got the infection because it was a cannula and that you can't reuse a cannula but you can reuse a blood like a blood test needle, like a phlebotomy needle. And and then she went back on that the following day when someone commented about reusing needles. She said reusing needles. I never said that. I'd never say that. But yeah, she did. She said that you can't reuse cannulas but you can reuse needles that take blood yeah like to take blood as long as they're on the same patient was what she said yeah and it's like yeah but you can't you really can't and you shouldn't be sharing information that you can do that because that is so freaking dangerous bye cammy good night uh, it's so dangerous and it's just and um, this whole thing of the medication is in a locked cabinet just makes me laugh because it's like you're you know yourself johnny boy that your daughter can walk you know she can stop faking to the world that she can't you know she can get hold of that medication again i'm a mum if i knew that my child had a history of trying to unalive themselves using their medication there is no way that medication would be in the house let alone somewhere where they yeah. could grab it when Literally, i was in foster care no there wouldn't even be yeah. alcohol in that house yeah when i was in foster care even when i hit 18 and i was being moved on it still had to be locked somewhere there yeah. was an incident where a foster carer left medication out and i managed to grab it because she left it out and that made it even more so that they were like no it has to be locked and you have to have the key with you at all times and eventually i was moved to a foster carer who um she'd only ever had remand um foster placements before because i was in specialist foster care for teenagers with mental health issues who couldn't be placed elsewhere and teenagers on remand and i was the first one she had that hadn't gone there on remand so she had a set of keys that were around her neck and she had like um i can't think where it's called like you walk in front of it and an alarm will go off and that was on the stairs and it was kind of like it used to be a chapel so it didn't used to have an upstairs so to get downstairs you'd have to walk past like this sensor that would set an alarm off because she was so used to people like running away um so that like the key to the front door there was only a front door not a back door because of it being a chapel in the past and that key was on there and the key to the medication cupboard that she uses on there like she had the keys with it even when she slept and they sent me there because of that strict thing and i think like now like i haven't self-harmed for like three and a half years and i haven't attempted for like six years but back when that was a regular thing for me i was on like three daily medication and i wasn't on nearly as high a dose of the stuff as she claims to be i was on that stuff and they had to give it to me they didn't have a choice because consultants said to but i was on three daily medication then weekly medication and i'm still stuck on weekly use and out and i'm not too bothered because my carers can go and get it for me like it's not a big deal but yeah like having that amount of medication because we all know that there's definitely a lot more than a week's worth there and doctors if you have a history of that it will be like three daily or two daily or even every day you go into the pharmacy and get your medication you have to build up that trust so I after you can be trusted every 24 hours it builds up to maybe 48 or 72 hours worth of medication and then it will be a week's worth and then a lot of people get stuck on a week's worth for years and years like i have been but you, you kind of have to prove yourself trustworthy to have that amount of medication and 
to not do anything with it. Um, yeah. There's no way she would have like a month's worth of that medication just sat there no doctor in their right mind no like i know here if you're under the mental health team you're like the doctor sends the prescription to the pharmacy which is the issue Mm. because i've been trying to get off weekly for a long time my pharmacy because of my past history and bear in mind this was years ago i'm a fully grown fucking adult now but my pharmacy will call my GP, even though I'm on palliative care. I cannot request more than a week's worth of medication because of my history. And that's standard yeah. up and down the UK. Yeah. Heather? Yeah, yeah. Like here it's if can you're you into the... An eye on, can you keep an eye on everything because I need to go for a week? Yeah. It's, PP, if if you're on... That, if you're into the CMHT here, the vast majority of people will be on weekly medication regardless of history just because Even they're under the cmht pills. Like, give me yeah. pills they only give me a week's worth yeah because i've got like stuff that wouldn't really harm me if i took all of it like the, all the weeks worth at once and it's everything it's a week's worth of everything including stuff that pretty much keeps me alive um the only thing oh, that yeah isn't in that is inhalers and that's because you can't get a week's a week long inhaler if you know what i mean like you get the amount that's in the metal canister you don't control that but everything else i get a week's worth it's Um, like when my control drugs come i have to sign for it and so does the pharmacy she's never had her medication her control drugs signed for no. What kind of pharmacy she got? Like, I know my pharmacy doesn't make me sign for mine because I've been with them years and they know my face, but any time a carer goes in, even if it's a carer that they know has gone in multiple times before, the carer still has to show their ID and they still have to sign for it. Yeah, I but still have to sign for my medication. Legally, you're meant to sign for it. I don't know that. Well, yeah. I haven't picked mine up in a long time anyway. My carers have been collecting mine for a long time. Yeah, maybe you I think I went in there. It. Yeah, like I went like once quite a while ago when the shortage of one of my medications started and that was a right palaver because they were saying get put on the full release version of this, blah, blah, blah. It's easy. And one, they're pharmacists, they shouldn't be telling me to get put on a slow release version of anything because they don't know how I'll respond to it. But two, I have a feeding tube. I can't crush the slow release version. There's a reason why I'm on the fast acting version. And I tried telling them like, you know, I've been on the slow release version. My mental health was the worst that it's ever been. Um, Granted, I was homeless at the time and there was a big, traumatic event that happened when i was on that slow release version as well so i can't tell whether it was the medication or whether it was all that was going on in my life at that moment but i told them like it didn't work i was seriously mentally ill like life threatening me mentally and well at the time and well at the time and they were like well no well well next time you come in we're not going to have this so you have to go on the slow release and then my carer went the next week and went to collect it and it was i take because it doesn't come in the dose that i take i take three different tablets of the same medication to make it up and um they had only run out of the 300 milligram which they hadn't had for a long time and they were like they were telling me the week before when i went in that they wouldn't have any of it at all anywhere and i was like well fine then i'll have to go to one of the pharmacy and get it but it it was absolutely ridiculous and then my carer went in the following week and just said she's got a feeding tube and they were like oh we didn't know she had a feeding tube we shouldn't have told her to take the slow release and it says on every single box every box of my medication says crush and disperse and put down feeding tube yeah and they're the pharmacy giving me that and yet they don't know i've got a feeding tube but they're giving me like seven or eight boxes of tablets which all say crush disperse and put down feeding tube yep can i just say i don't don't know those of you who 
saying you get deliveries and you don't sign. Do you have control drugs with those deliveries? Because if you do, it's against the law for the pharmacies not to get your signature because of the opiate pandemic, mm -hmm. the abuse of the opiates in this country. Emily, we can't hear you, babe. Same as like my um, mental health ones. I can go there, I can say to the doctor, oh, I need to go up or I need to go down, but then they have to go through the whole mental health team, discuss that, have a meeting, then agree. Then when I go to my chemist, I can sign for it, but someone else has to be aware of what I'm taking and how much I'm taking. Yeah. Um, I just want to give uh, some of the other people a chance to speak. Like, I'm going to have to yeah. go because I've got to get up and ring the doctors at 8 o'clock in the morning and I'm nowhere near asleep yet. So. Okay, Emily, Alice. Well, comment? Sleep well. Uh, two seconds, Heather. Sleep well, Alice. Which comment? Yeah. What comment? Sleep well, Alice. Sorry. Uh, what comment, Heather? Morning? Which one? From that Sophie with the uh, Palestinian flag? No. But this Laura loves to talk. Don't listen, get out. Yeah, if you don't like it, then leave. Simple. Uh, right. Okay, I'm probably going to butcher mm -hmm. your name, so I'm really sorry, but Malika? Yeah. Uh, is is uh, that how I say it? <laughs> yeah, it's Malika. But... Malika, okay. Sorry. Um, can you kick me out because I can't yeah. figure out how to leave? Yeah. There we go. Um, hey, sorry, Malika, go. That's okay. Uh, well, I've seen a few videos pop up on my For You page about Kirsten. Um, and I saw the one where she had a seizure. Uh, I suffer from seizures, um, but I'm still being... Um, what do you call it um i've forgotten what it's called i'm still being investigated for them um and it's just seeing someone and i think knowing that they 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 do it to sh just to i guess show people um it if i feel sad for her um like it angers me that she does it but i also feel sad that she has to that she feels that she has to do it to get attention from people um like my when i have a seizure i it's it's horrible and it for me it's i feel like it's worse for the people around me to mm. see it to happen and i just think i don't know just it it, it saddens me for her and yeah, I... Uh, I know yeah. what you're saying. It's like the same. Like a lot of what she does angers me, but I feel sorry that she, in her mind, she has to do things, and she thinks that's the only way to get the attention she wants. Yeah. The thing is, seizures are quite horrible to witness, anyway. Regardless, and to say, well, obviously, you saying that she's putting them on, and you clearly have evidence for that. I'm not suggesting otherwise, but. Um, to even watch a real one in real life is fairly traumatic to witness. So for her to parade on live, pretending to have a seizure, causing people unnecessary distress is actually really quite scary. And I think going back to the meds thing, or like obviously just a bit der derailing, but going back to the meds thing, it's like I feel like one day it's going to turn into a boy who cried wolf situation. She's going to end up unaliving herself in front of hundreds of people who are watching and no one's going to call an ambulance because they think she's still faking this yeah. is why i call an ambulance every single time not only to safeguard her yeah but to safeguard all the vulnerable and non-vulnerable people watching it yeah because one day it's going to happen if she is not stopped it's going to happen and there was one day last month that i generally thought she'd done it i witnessed that girl put 20 milligrams of lorazepam down her tube then she put 20 milligrams of diazepam down her tube and then she put 40 milligrams of oromorph down her tube 20 minutes later that girl slumped over face was on the bed so i called an ambulance her dad came in 
she wasn't breathing for a few of those moments either, might I add, and then the rest of the breath was very shallow. It was a clearly an overdose. Sorry, Emily, I forgot you can't say that, can you? No. Just um, say an O. O. It was clearly an O. And then I called the ambulance. I was on the phone to the paramedics who were also watching it and asked me if I did I have access to her Narcan kit. That was their exact words. So they, they were aware of it. Then she informed me that she, she, the paramedic informed me that the police were watching it currently. So to come off, but as I was coming off, her dad walked into the house, didn't even look at his daughter who was completely slumped over. Nope. Didn't check, she was okay, nothing. Came on the live and said, has anybody called an ambulance? It's not necessary. To which didn't even check her pulse. Didn't even check her pulse. That's what got me. If he'd, if he'd at least bent over and checked her pulse and like pulled her back, I think I would have kind of accepted it and gone, eh, well, maybe. But the fact that he literally walked in and his first thought was to grab the phone and go, oh, has anyone called an ambulance? If so, I don't think that's telling. necessary. When that's not normal. That's not, ex that's not normal behaviour. <laughs> it's just not. It was a clear O. Oh, it was clear. I, I, I did video it. I'm not going to lie, I videoed it because I knew what she was doing. I've been saying it for months and months and months. So I wanted to time how long between the medication and that episode. And I've done it on a few of her lives. And then I saw that and I was like, oh my God, she's not breathing. But one day that's going to happen. Her dad's going to ignore her and she's going to be unalived. Yes. And hundreds of people will see that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're doing this because she needs to get off this app and she it's the problem with TikTok is fantastic because it connects people together that have got chronic illnesses it means that you get to see funny cat videos and stuff like that it's it's fun it's good fun if you're using it responsibly and you know how to use the app responsibly the problem for people like kirsten is she's found the app she's found a group of people who all have chronic illnesses and then the more she learns about their chronic illnesses the more she can develop her own chronic illnesses and then she develops new chronic illnesses because there's so many people on the app with different conditions that are sharing their story because that's what we all want to do we want to share our story we want more people to know about what we go through and all that jazz but for people like her she just sucks people dry, spits them out, gets a new group of people, sucks them dry, and repeat and repeat and repeat. And her parents are more than happy to use basically children as carers for their child because they don't want to do it. It shows that they know how fake it is, though, surely. Yeah. Her dad not coming in yeah. and checking a pulse. Like some, I, th I, can't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry, it's Chani or Shani in the comments that his priority is not in the right place, which A, is true, and B, it's it's like, well, no, it's actually his priority is the fact that this is all over the internet and he knows that it's fictitious. Yeah, and I just want to bring Jordan in because Jordan was, um, he commented and said that he was on, I don't, sorry, Jordan, I'm assuming your gender. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> uh, Jordan's a girl. Um, sorry, Jordan. Jordan was actually on Emily, Kirsten's this, lives this and commented. I blocked, okay, I blocked her months and months ago, but she's in here making comments that I can't see. Kirsten is? Yeah. And oh, I can't see. I, her, I can't see, so I can't block her, hon. I can't see a comment either. Why don't you jump in the box, Kirsten? Come on, come and have fun. I'm really Jordan, sorry. Jordan, go on. Guys. Tell us about your experience with the uh, with the the fun that was, Kirsten. <laughs> um, I've been like a casual watcher for probably about eighteen months, and I'm chronically on myself, so normally I'm up at these horrendous hours, and she'll sit there and have seizures on live and i got to a point where i was genuinely really concerned and i said to her you know like do you not have care in place like i have a friend who has seizures she has pots like she has round the clock care because she cannot keep herself alive without care she's like no they don't do that social care don't do that and i was like well i don't know if it's different in other authorities but they do do that they do do that i know people who have it so like surely you can ask for that and she was like well they don't think it's appropriate for me i was like if anything 
that all of these conditions that you say you have make you more eligible for social care than anyone that I know. If you're in organ failure, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, if you have gastroparesis that you can't manage, if you have epilepsy or non-epileptic seizures or both, it seems, um, if you have all of these conditions, you are like a number one priority to get social care. So I just, I, I never understood where she was coming from. And then there was a live that popped up the other day and she said, oh, we've had an update with my, um, my care plan. Um, we can get them in for a few more hours. They come in three times a day. Coming in three times a day is not going to do anything if you're having these seizures constantly. You need someone monitoring you. How are you allowed to transfer from your bed to your chair, to your sofa, get in your kitchen, go to the... Well, I don't think she says she's got a catheter, but um, how are you able to do all of these things without being attended? I, I just... I don't... I, ca I just can't wrap my head around it. Like, even for me, I only became chronically ill after getting COVID a few years ago. And I get social care because it's at a point where I can't manage my daily tasks anymore. Like, I get that five hours a day. How can she only get an hour visit three times a day? And because she's... it's private care that her daddy <laughs> or her pays for. It's not the social that are paying for it. It's private. And that's what they can afford, most likely. Yeah. I'd imagine um, it's, it's what the actual me. truth of that is. Emily? Actually, yeah. I'm echoing. I don't know why it's freaking me out. Anyway, um, so she has companion carers that are partly paid for by mental health and the other part paid for by them. So mental and health is funding this that. whole thing. For her mental health, she has a companion care package. Because there's continued health care on the NHS. And even if she allegedly says that she's not eligible for social care, she has to qualify for continued health care. If she's got two tubes, a femoral line, all of these other things that even I don't know the name of, how... How are you not qualifying for continued health care? And surely, if anything, if my child had all of these illnesses and they were not having social care, I would be shouting and raving from the rooftops. I would be writing to my MP. I would be blasting it all over social media. And instead, all we can find is an article from 10 years ago about being submitted into inpatient for an eating disorder and nothing else. And unfortunately, I do think that that is probably what spiralled all of this. It's, yeah. She got sick. She felt the need to get a tube as you know you know maybe she does have gastroparesis eating disorders can cause those things but it's just spiraled and i just i wish she could get the help that she needs but she's not helping herself her parents aren't helping her and another thing is like the whole housing situation like she got put into a bungalow so quickly i was served a section 21 recently and my council outright said we have no accommodation that is suitable for you as a wheelchair user there is nothing we can do you know we can put you up in like an emergency temporary situation oh, i sympathize with you on that because i've had to move because my boy's mobility would it's another story but he's not very mobile anymore and in our area there is no disabled housing whatsoever let alone for wheelchair users so i've had to convert my living room into a bedroom but i know where she is bungalows are very popular and they're mm. built quite regularly because where she lives is mostly retirement yeah my nan used to live nearby so um, um, i can the... fight for that heather and jordan sorry um I've been accused actually because I used to be a nurse of giving this person advice. I don't even know who she is. Never been alive with her. Um, but I'm no longer a nurse. I've been off for 10 years due to factors fine. But I was in a way with her pretty much for a full year and I needed help transferring out of the bed into the waiting chair. Um, I had a board then that I could slide across to sit on the sofa and then I would sit there until the chairs came back and then they would take me to the bathroom, make me something to eat and then they come in at night and then put me to bed. Now, 
I was just saying. That pisses me off. I hate that. It really angers me that people have to sit and wait. It's, uh, you you know, not enough funding. It really uh, does make me angry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I I would I imagine my grandmother, and I certainly would not have. Um, I would have quite happily waited to get her sorted out because I know the elderly like to go to bed quite early, whereas I go to bed at about two three o'clock in the morning. Um, Jordan, I'm quite like yourself. I've also got ill from having COVID. It's called long COVID, isn't it? Yeah. And I also have a few other chronic health problems. Um, one's called brittle asthma, which only 1% of the UK suffer with. And I've got Addison's disease as well, um, which basically means my body doesn't produce steroids. And I have to take steroids every day in order to stay alive. And say I get stressed out, or I have a fall, or um, I get a bug, or something like that. I have a vial of hydrocortisone, and even though I used to nurse, I had to go through it with my endocrinology nurses to show them that I knew how to um, draw up the solution, which is the sealing solution, putting it into the powder, the hydrocortisone powder. I had to shake it until it was clear, withdraw it, and then, like, wrap it into a pad by that time, but it's for male leg. But you're right, when what you're saying, I am actually in a bungalow, and I'm not allowed to live anywhere else. So where I'm living right now, there's just a lot of old people living around me. But I have been accused of giving this girl information. I've never been in this person's life. Um, the first time I came across it was via Sally. Yeah. Um, as for the femoral lines, um, when I go into hospital, my veins are very, very, very bad. They're very poor. So um, I would get a central line in my neck or I would get a femoral line. But they're only, they can't, there's a, there's a limit to them. You can only have them in for three weeks and then you need it changed. Yeah. So you can't go home with the femoral line in. You would need a pick line. Or yeah, a line. certain amount of times you can have a central line put in. Mm -hmm. But you, you can't, it's, it's unheard of really for, like you said, unless it's um, a case of somebody coming to the end of life care, you know, in their own home. But just say she was like that, she wouldn't be able to go home with the femoral line in. Because if you did, you're not caring for it properly. The nurses aren't caring for it or washing it. You get an infection which turns into sepsis. And it can only be in you for three weeks and then they have to resituate. But what's the commonest thing that people get is either a Hickman line, which sits underneath your skin, and that's a permanent line, like a central line, only it just sits underneath your skin and then you use a needle to, and you put the octopus on it and stuff like that. Or you get a pick line, which is situated well, in your arm. In the Hickman line. A Hickman line goes directly into your heart. So there's a pick line. Yeah, the pick line does. So the pick line starts yeah. from your arm. Yeah. But the Hickman goes directly into your heart through the main artery in your neck. Yeah. And then it's spread down. Yes. But your Hickman line is hidden, whereas your pick line, you can see it, if you know what I mean, because, yeah, because it can't be closed under the skin. So for her to say that she's got a thermal line and it's complete crap. As a nurse and as a patient, I could tell you that that's crap. She does. This is the thing. She's the misinformation that she shares and the misinformation that she spreads is so vast and over so many topics that she's instantly going to get people's backs up. And if someone dares comment anything criticizing her or ask like querying her facts then they get blocked immediately she just blocks them because it's easy it's better for her to just block you because you could potentially out her as someone 
who knows the actual truth. So she'll just block you. Now, our concern is that the misinformation that she's spreading, like her, I don't know if you were on earlier, but she, um, there's a live recording. I think Alex shared it or Munch Hunter might have shared it. Um, and she said that um, you don't have to keep a central line sterile. Now, obviously, we all know that you do. We all know that you do. We're all intelligent enough to, to know that you do. But the problem is, is the wrong person could have heard that comment and then decided, oh, I don't need to worry about sterilizing all of this. I don't need to worry about sanitizing my hands. I can just grab it and just whack something in. I don't need to flush it because she never flushes hers. Oh, I can push my meds super quickly and that's perfectly fine i can push one med after the other without flushing in between because that's also fine this is all the information that she says and none of it is fine and none of it's safe none of it is going to going to not cause you problems all of it is going to cause you problems but obviously for her pushing her meds as fast as she can causes issues which then give, gets her more attention because she'll have a seizure right after she push, pushes her meds and it's like a running gag now with all of us with because we've got a group chat and oh, come you. midnight come midnight every single night there's a video of her live having a seizure because she's just done her meds happens every single night at, around midnight every night without fail if you go on to her live or do what we do, which is sensible, and watch it for, from the For You page. Don't actually click on it, because then she knows you're watching. Watch it from the For You page. You can see what she's doing. You can see her pushing her meds, and then literally 15 minutes later, at most, she's having a seizure every time, because she's, one, pushing her meds too fast, two, not flushing in between, and three, she's pushing medication that's not supposed to be given together. Now, I've got various i'm on various medications now i've got certain meds that i have to take so i've got my my daily meds and then i've got my prn like most of us have got yeah and i have to leave it at least an hour between my normal meds and my prn meds at least an hour yeah yeah and with i'm on two medications that can that together can cause serotonin sickness so even though I have no symptoms of serotonin sickness, as it is at the moment, I have to go through the checklist of symptoms every week. And I generally do it on a Saturday. I go through the symptoms, make sure I've not got any new symptoms that are on that checklist. And if I have, I call the doctor on the Monday for us to discuss me coming off one of the medications. Luckily, like touch word. That anti -sickness. I'm not going to say what happened, but yep. Touch word. It's not happened so far. But the problem is, if you mix certain medications or take certain medications at the same time or take them too quickly, as Kat Mars just said, one milligram of cyclozine, not diluted, taken in seconds, is so dangerous and can give yeah. you the symptoms of a seizure. And she is yeah. spreading this misinformation because she's doing it constantly. People are watching her, people who are vulnerable, people who are impressionable, and they will literally watch her doing those things. And if they copy them, it's only a matter of time before someone else gets hurt. And from what I've been told and what I've heard through messages towards to me, messages to Heather and messages to Sally, it's already happened. Two people have already been harmed because of her. I just don't understand how she can come on a account knowing that she's going to be followed by other people with genuine chronic illness and not expect to be caught out. I think as yeah. well, it's like she'll be mm -hmm. on live and she'll directly address the fact that there are children watching her because it will be like, I don't know, someone will put in a comment like calling her a fake or something and she'll be like, oh, the children are out again. And then, so she's acknowledging that there are supposed yeah. children on her live 
and then she's injecting herself with these horrible quantities of drugs. She's faking all of these things. She's giving horrendous, like, a practical mm-hmm. advice. Like, I don't have any experience with, like, tubes or lines or anything, so I don't know any of that. But if I was someone who went on to that live and saw that, I'd think, oh, that's probably what you're supposed to do. Like, you, yeah. a, exactly. like a child or a teenager would probably do the same thing. Yeah, exactly, and that's the problem. Quickly um, um, like touch a- on her line. So, because she has a super pubic capita, the femoral line would not be put in. It wouldn't, unless she was at death's door. Because it's too close. It's too close to bacteria. Yeah. Mm. That's it's constantly uh, infected. I want to read out her list of diagnosis. Okay, two Can seconds ahead there. Crafter and um, Buckler have wanted yeah. to just say something. I was just, oh, yeah. I've been watching the live for a while, and you said that the doctors took her nasal trip feet out of her nose, and she keeps buying them and putting them in. So, how the hell is she getting this stuff? Is she, how'd she get in the ceiling and everything else to push this down her NG chip? You can get um, it offline very easily and her saline, well, her, her, her fluid and her feeds, she gets off Facebook groups. Go no, check my page. Nice. I don't want to say it because I don't want other people to get ideas, but go check my page. Yeah, if you go check Heather's page, she's got videos yeah. that show what how she does it and it's evidence, it's proof. And the reason I it. have her address is because she bought some of my son's old eight French N- NG tubes. I thought she needed them as a one-off when she first started buying them. But then she kept buying multiple lots, so I, I, I put a stop to it. That's how I know her address. That's I never uh, really realised how like easy it was for people to acquire acquire certain medical insert here, um, because I I am on TikTok. My screen time is horrendous, and like I'll just be scrolling on my for you page, and you'll get like random drama pages come up, and it will be I don't know someone screaming at someone because they owe them money or whatever, and then in the comments people are talking about they're selling. O's or they're selling uh, pre-insert medication here. Like, it's crazy. And I, I never knew any of this. Like, th- I never realised how easy it was for people to get a hold of things. The same things that people who are actually chronically ill are fighting for constantly from their doctors. Yep. And it's just, oh, yeah, it's mental. Uh, right, Heather, do you want to read the list then, darling? Yes. This is the list of conditions Kirsten apparently has. And I can't say it's an exhaustive list and that it's everything, because it, it probably isn't everything, but right. it's everything that we've listed. So she claims to have, I'll be in and out, so if it goes quiet, it's because I'm looking. So she claims to have. Stemic lumpus, I can't say that, but people know what I'm on about, I hope. Systemic lupus. That's the word, yeah. She says she has Ellis Danlos Classic and Vascular. It's impossible, but yeah, she them. Epilepsy, MCAS, uh, MS at one point she claimed to have. I know that for a fact. She claimed to have hyperinsulinism, hyperglycemia. She claimed to be type 1 diabetic. She claimed to, claimed to be type 3 di- diabetic, which is it's impossible. Um, she claimed to have pancreal damage, which is not even a diagnosis, and I can tell you that for a fact. Uh, she's paralysed from the waist down. She has POTS syndrome. She has gastroparesis. Autism, uh, nutcracker syndrome, gastroparesis, gut dismortality. What was the other? She's she's claimed to have oh cancer, tumors down her spine. At one stage, I don't know if she's done it on TikTok, but she did on 
Facebook, she claimed to have men one, which is the condition that I have. Um, she tried, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, sorry. <laughs> she tried to claim she had the endocrine condition my son has, which I can show everybody evidence that it's impossible. She claimed she was immune compromised and had no immune system. You can't be immune compromised and have no immune system. It's one or the other. Um, she claimed FND, borderline personality disorder, schizoaffective disorder, um, anorexia, hypermobility. Just Christ, the list goes on. Uh, at one stage, she, she was saying she had breast cancer and then she got the all clear. She gave herself the all clear, bless her. Um, did I say nutcracker syndrome? Yeah. He also said she had SMA. Um, what was the other one? Epilepsy. Forgot about that one. Um, and hyperglycemia. Postprandial hyperglycemia. No, postprandial hyperinsulinism, hyperglycemia, reactive type. Like I said, there's only four children with that in this world, and that I can pull up if I need to. Um, what else? Emily, she's claimed so many that I've lost fucking track. Oh, Amy said she claims to have frontal lobe epilepsy. Oh, yeah, she's... Frontal lobe epilepsy, even though she's had no EEG. Uh, PN PNS, PNES. Oh, yeah. What's what is it? PN. N E A S and P N E D and P Pandas and Panda. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, and photosensitive epilepsy. She claimed to have that yeah. as well, oh, even yeah, though she did a video that would trigger anyone who has photosensitive epilepsy. Uh, unsafe swallow. Um, she couldn't eat and she couldn't drink like literally two months ago nothing could go past her mouth her body didn't absorb glucose but she has no glucagon injection so that's yeah. it pnes psychogenic non-epileptic seizures that's the one i was thinking of can i say that hmm? is the i i was a nurse for six years in intensive care right that is the biggest pile of crap that anybody can come up with Plus, for medical doctors to turn around and say, you're actually okay, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. What I think she's doing, and it's dangerous what she's doing, she's listening, to, sorry, my pugs are arguing, you can hear them. Um, she's actually listening to other people's health stories and then turn it into her own one. Um, now... With regards to her not being able to move, um, like I said, I found out about this girl through Sally. I think the world is Sally. She's absolutely amazing. And she showed a video of this girl who is unable to transfer and unable to move. Moving and transferring quite, quite well. And I was thinking to myself, I couldn't do that. I needed help to get on the chair, I needed help to get into the toilet, I needed help to fucking go to bed at night. And I can't, you know, I could put my, um, I could change the top half of myself, but the bottom half, like putting on my trousers and stuff, I couldn't do. I needed help with it. She had yeah. some fake seizures online, Ruby, yes. You We're can fake seizures. Again. You can actually fake seizures online. Um, there's a girl that um, uh, attempts to collapse all the time mm -hmm. and everybody on Nora's M's in the kitchen. Mm hmm Yeah. And I hear all yeah. about the drama. Yes, so she regularly passes out conveniently and then gets people to ring the ambulance for her and they can't wait and then she does visa towards them. It's ask her. I haven't ask finished her what medical guys. Ask her what medical certificate she has for the animals. I'll tell you whether she's right or not. She ain't a vet. She buys her shit from the vets. 
But um, she also claims that she has had a G tube, a Nikki button, a Judgenum tube, um, a J Jed tube, and they've all migrated out of her body. But she's yeah. got no scars. And she her SPC has never rejected damage. out of her body. She's claimed she's had liver damage. Um, and that's why she can't have surgical tubes, that's bollocks, because I'm in liver failure and I can have a tube if I want one. Don't she's want in multi-organ failure. Oh, that's new. How did she, when did she get that diagnosis, Emily? Was it after mine? Uh, that was when I was modding for her. She was in multiple organ failure then. Oh, what was that, 2022? 2023. Oh, that's convenient, isn't it? <laughs> um, she also claims that she lived in America and was TPM fed. And that's why liver's failing. Uh, what else? Oh, she's had a port. No scars for a port. I've still got fucking scars from my port from 10 years back. Yeah, even though she has EDS, so she would scar really badly. And she's had... Don't oh, forget, no, we're, we're all forgetting the CPR. Not just once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> and not having to go to hospital. And no bruising <laughs> on her chest at all. No broken ribs. No cracked chest. Nothing. Just... CPR and stayed at home and was on live 20 minutes later. Perfectly fine. So, for to be a qualified vet, and you can all go search this as well, you need a RVCS certificate. Stop looking at the show off. Sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. I won't um, be anyone's this. asking, it's I my sister, from, by the way. I'm not being an orange. Well, I am, but it's my sister. I'm a big sister. I'm allowed. Don't clear my chest. I just farmed in college and I passed. Thanks. Even though she crashed the tractor. I just want to pick up yep. on one thing Emily said. She apparently had a cardiac arrest, was rushed to hospital, and made a miraculous recovery. And the doctor said she could go home and she was live within 20 minutes. That's bull right there because even if somebody has a cardiac arrest, and they came into a and &E, we got them back, and we always keep them in because there's obviously an underlying reason of why they've had a cardiac arrest, number one. No, her claim was she had CPR because, what was her, what did she say about her breathing, Heather? Can I say, from my own experience, this subject's a little bit triggering, but I can cope with it, so don't panic, but... The reason they keep you in after a cardiac respiratory arrest is because if you've been in a true cardiac respiratory arrest, there's a 95% chance that you will have another one yep. and pass. Yeah, I know. she changed it to, she was, had shallow breathing, so it was just rescue breaths, which that is not it. done. CPR is not done for rescue breaths. There's bags and masks yep. for your mouth. Yep, 100% Heather, 100%. And then her dad even came onto my live and said it did happen. He was there. They get the carer started the CPR. The air ambulance came and the paramedic took over. They got her back. She was fine. So she stayed at home. She didn't even go to hospital. She stayed at home. She was fine. So she came live about an hour or so later. And he knows it was a miracle, and we should just understand that it was a miracle. I don't understand what her dad gains from lying about this to us. I don't know. She's not a But he's feeding her illness even more by saying that. Yeah, but the problem is, I think, with him and his, him and his relationship with Kirsten is just weird. But it's also, as Heather said, he wants to keep her as a child. He lost a child. Um, he had a daughter, Kirsten had a sister, who passed away, unfortunately, um, when she was younger from a brain tumour. And obviously all the care and attention was given to that child because she needed it because she was seriously ill. And so we believe that Kirsten kind of put herself in that role when her sister passed away and her dad then took the care that he was giving to her sister and just transferred it onto her. At what point does yeah. this become a fraud case? Exactly. That's what we're trying to sort it out. Her dad's complicit in? Yeah. We're going to see a Netflix documentary this time next year. Yep. yep. I want to say my yep. son at 24 days old had a cardiac respiratory arrest. 
The reason he had a cardiac respiratory arrest is because I didn't know he had the, the endocrine condition he had, nobody knew. And his blood sugar dropped so low that everything stopped. Brain damage was caused, everything. So when she claimed that, it really, really hit close to home and it really did make me angry because doing that on somebody is traumatizing. It's absolutely traumatizing. So where is that? the therapy because they offer you therapy if you have to do it on a loved one or if you're caring for someone where's the therapy for a carer if they had to do that well, yes. somebody mentioned about an io line you can't have a permanent io line it's it's drilled into your bone marrow yeah she if had that done by the air ambulance apparently that's something else she's claimed she has done do not that, not that that shoulder, shoulder. Yeah, it's done in the big bones, like the, the mm. arm, the leg, the shin. Yeah, I, I've had mine in, in my leg because I was completely out of it and I needed a yeah, And it, And I still, even though I woke up and I wasn't in there, it wasn't in whenever I came out in intensive care because I had the central line in my neck. Um, I still felt the pain and to this day I still get pain in that area. I've still got so, massive scar on my shin from one of them. You cannot have a permanent IO um, access. I'm an IO? When did she say that? There was something in the comments about her saying she's getting... No, they were, it general. was someone in the comments joking, saying she's waiting for them to for her to say oh, she's got right, a, an IO. <laughs> She did claim that the air ambulance came out and put an IO in her arm, and again, she just got to stay at home. She didn't have to go to hospital. That's oh, crap. No. She's a children terrible man. Are you joking, really? Unfortunately not. That's, she said it word for word. She had that done. She got to stay at home. She didn't have to go into hospital. It's weird that they give her an IO whenever she's got that. access all the time. Um... Crafty, I don't know, sorry Craft, I don't know, you. I've forgotten your name, I'm not even going to lie, but I'm not going to say it anyway. Um, I don't know if anyone else has had an IO, but I've still got a dimple from the scar from mine. So yeah. is my boy. Yeah, so they. So and as for the sleeping, you would, she would get sleep paralysis within five days. Ten days she would be... Psychosis, is, that's called sleep psychosis, yeah. then. Okay, um, it, it's one fifty three in the morning. Um, I've been up since five. Sorry, guys. Um, and then your brain would become so scattered that you'd start seeing stuff. So, there, but, yeah, same. But for her to say she's not slept or she doesn't sleep, so then why did she say in her life, which there is evidence as well of her saying she slept all day, and her dad said the exact same thing. <coughs> I it's having it. a seizure and then knowing exactly where she is and what's Emily, you know flying! Yeah, I just noticed that. Yay! Of course I know signs. I got told off when I was a kid. You got told off for signing bug-eyed bitch. <laughs> Witch. Yeah. Not, not that Kiki doesn't like her or anything. The Kiki doesn't like her or anything, do you Kiki? No, oh. there's absolutely no hate towards uh, medical Barbie. I mean, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm going That's to her new nickname. Because um, the lovely Kiki has said it is nearly two o'clock in the morning. I have to be up at six to take my morning meds. And... I'm here, Crafty. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. have to go because I need to take my strong meds because I'm here. I'm absolutely shattered and I need to take painkillers. Yeah, the same. Right, so everyone take your meds. The seaside. <laughs> everyone take meds and love to you all. Uh, give me a follow if you don't already. Give me a message if you want to share anything or if you've been on here, if you're on the live and you just don't want to, you haven't wanted to come up and chat. Okay, we just quit. Can I ask? Just one question. How do yeah, I yeah. send you a message on TikTok I, or any other platform? Because it's not giving me the option to. Uh, if you click on my name, it should let you message me. If my, I don't know if there's a thing with TikTok where you have like an inbox that's too full, but you can find me on Facebook. Okay. Right. It's just my full name and it's my face next to my other half. Um, football has said when am I next live? Hang on, I'll check the calendar. Bear with 
Should we all say it together? Night medical, medical Barbie. Breakfast. <laughs> medical Barbie. Wednesday. Can we repeat meds? Wednesday, actually, I can go live because uh, the other half's working a night shift again, so I'll be I've able to go on live on Wednesday. Have a break. Okay. <laughs> um, Never stop it. Nick and Tim Brett, I'm tired, man. Nick and Tim Brett first. Well, it will be... Hello. <laughs> It will be around half nine again, as per, because I have to wait until um, my son's gone upstairs, not like to bed. He just goes upstairs and watches DVDs and shit in his room because it's some holidays. Um, Very so, yeah. opinionated when it comes to this, bless him. Yes. Say my child can see the bollocks, uh, the rubbish. So uh, you can message me whenever you want. Um, like I said, find me on Facebook. I'm easy to find. And... Take care, everyone. Make sure you all take your meds. Love you all. Bye, and thank you all for joining Bye, me. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. 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 Love you all. Love, love you all. Bye. 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 Get out. Bye. Bye. Oh, disconnect. Oh, one second. Try and turn it off. The Observer, providing you with the latest TikTok drama from across the UK.